Yes, very good. Okay. <laughs> I'm really sorry about this. It's uh, We're trying something a little bit new out here with, um, with this particular um, Zoom version of vMix. So this is what we're using. We use... For this particular project, welcome everybody. For this particular project, we use a particular bit of software um, to do uh, our streaming media and um, to, our, to to composite all our video together that we've rerun live online. And it's called vMix. And the new version incorporates um, Zoom. And it's, it's, for us, it's a little untested. So we're trying a few things out to see how it works. And um, as you can see, uh, this is there's a few sort of uh, initial sort of problems and things we need to resolve in terms of how many participants we can have in on at the same time. But I was hoping to show you all of you on screen. Um, it seems to be that, this, that the more I have in, in here, it sort of um, takes away, sucks away all my kind of bandwidth that I potential I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in one at a time throughout the, 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 the workshop this morning. And I appreciate we're already running a little bit late so I hopefully we won't I won't I don't want to delay any further um, and and make sure we're we're up we're okay. So what, what I'm going to do first of all I just wanted to in introduce the the, the project um, with a couple of slides here um, and in, in this sort of simulated um, sort of conference sort of workshop environment um, and I've got some other other exciting places to take you shortly um, but I wanted to just give you a little overview of the project timeline. First of all, if you can all see that, hopefully I can zoom in a little bit more for you. Maybe I'll just give you a full screen view of that one. Um, if I can find out where I am on here. There we are. So we're just going to go, um, uh, uh, we'll go on to that one there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to show you that. That's the sort of project timeline. As you can see, we've been, we're starting our, our, Today is our Birds of Paradise Theatre Company um, Knowledge Exchange Workshop. Um, we're running a little bit late. We, we anticipate, we hope to do it at the end of May, but we are running into June. So a little bit a little bit delayed. But the residency with, with Birds of Paradise Theatre Company starts um, in June and will run right the way through to September and October and, 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 and into October um, and perhaps even a little bit of November. But certainly October because they've got some plans they want to be doing, working, working together in collaboration with partners in Hong Kong, which um, Mari and Mona will be talking about um, in a moment. Um, so that is the, um, that, that's our current program. We've had a few delays and, and we're, we're, we're going to be running our residency programs. We're running with two theatre companies, Cryptic Arts, um, who started earlier this year. They're going to continue their residency. They had a slight sort of interruption um, and they couldn't, they couldn't do anything for the past couple of months. Um, and that's now going to be moving into um, June, July, perhaps even July, August. But I'm not not overly concerned. Um, I think we've managed this before, um, running concurrent workshops at the same time. And I'm sure we can we we can do it and we, and, and catch up um, where we've where we've lost a bit of time, particularly around the cryptic work, cryptic arts uh, residency. But that won't affect how we run the residency with Birds of Paradise Theatre Company. Is that is that okay? I, I think that's. I, I have. I have sort of. I won't want to dwell on this too much. But um, please do do put up, raise a hand if you had a question about anything about that um, about our particular program, our research um, program time time timetable. Okay. So what I've got next is um, just today's program. What we're doing today. Um, so my little introduction, which is already running rather late, um, <laughs> apologies, and I, I hope we hopefully we'll catch up. But um, we're going to be doing uh, this morning, having a little introduction from myself, and then we're going to go straight into Birds of Paradise Theatre Company, who have got a number of different talks and and slides that that they want to present and speak and, and partners who have joined us here today, and we can bring them up on screen and um, and have their partners contribute some comments and thoughts about what Birds of Paradise Theatre Company are doing and what they might do with this residency. Then we'll have a short break. I'm going to do some demos. I'm going to have comments and feedback from my um, colleagues in the research team. My, um, and before we do that, I'm going to introduce everybody in a moment. So I won't do it now, but I'll let everyone just say a quick introduction to themselves if they wouldn't mind. So um, what we'll do is we will go um, to 
um, uh, that in mo momentarily. So let me move to my next slide. Um, that is what we're attempting to do today. That looks a bit complicated. If you think on, on the left there is our ticket as our Zoom kind of meeting, what we're doing, we're coming in on green screens and I'm mixing you all together in vMix and I'm piping it back into, into Zoom. So what you see in Zoom is all a combination of all your images together and bits of video that we add in as well. So we can do all sorts of things and composite this whole project together. So um, uh, that's just a little slide, just a reminder about the particular residency we're running now. No, sorry, the project, the project overall. Um, we started 1st of December, um, running right way through to November, and, and we can certainly extend that given the delays we've had uh, with Cryptic, and that's not a problem with the AHRC. Um, it might, it won't, it won't extend our funding, but it would extend the time, the time scale we can we can deliver this project on. So I'm not overly concerned about us slipping on our timing. Um, but there you are. I just want to give you a little bit of a slide to give you a little overview of the entire project and who's involved. And you all, um, of course, all of those colleagues involved with Birds of Paradise Theatre Company are here today for your for your workshop. So let me do some introductions. Let's go round round down the table. Before we go anywhere else, I'm going to take you to um, for these introductions. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go into here first of all. We'll do it. We'll do these introductions here, and I'm going to put in. Um, uh, so let's go around the table, and I can quickly get, quickly put in bring in um, my responder here. So let's have. Um, Maybe I can get Jane in for a moment. Um, Jane, do you want to say just say a quick quick hello um, and who you are, what you're doing in the project, that sort of thing? Yeah, sure. Um, hi everyone. I'm Jane. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Brighton and a co-investigator on the Teleprison Stage project. Um, I work in the fine art department. I ran the MA Inclusive Arts practice for six years, and a lot of my research is with disabled artists. Fantastic. I was hoping to get you up on screen there, but I didn't do it. I might be. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll get Steve up. Steve, do you want to say a quick? Uh, 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 there we go. Let's get you in there, and then let's, let's put you in here next to me, just for just one second. And... and um, Try and do that. There we go. Uh, if I can find you, so many windows. Very not really well prepared here, but okay. Let's get get Steve in this way instead. Steve, do you want to just quite say a quick hello? Who you are? Where are you from? Where am I from? From Manchester. Uh, but now I I've been in Singapore for thirteen years. Um, I'm, I'm uh, president of, of a big arts college here, but part of University of the Arts Singapore. Um, so my background is is theatre as, as both an actor and a director. I've my own theatre company working in experimental theatre, uh, but multimedia, so using a, uh, a lot of me, uh, a lot of media projections and and so on, combining them with with li live actors. Uh, and then I've also been researching for many years in the use of technology in performing arts. Um, and I wrote a big book on it called D Digital uh, Performance, which was MIT Press 2007. Um, and I've been collaborating with Paul for uh, since I think 2006 with the big um a, a big sort of telematic show together um linking uh, the, the 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 uk and and the states and a sort of audience participation theater theater piece and then we've done various various other projects and um you know have been good friends and and shared a, a lot of research uh, and and so i'm co-investigator co with paul on uh, on this this project and really fascinated by um the use of, of online te uh, technologies and and the, and the different so softwares that we've been working through the telepresence uh, stage stage project so that's me great thank you Steve thanks very much um on there yeah thanks very much Steve um I'm now gonna uh, in, like to just introduce to maybe we could go to to Trish Trish Wheatley from from disability arts online Hi there. Yes, um, I'll do a very quick introduction because I've got a slot later. But yes, I'm Trish. I'm the Chief Executive of Disability Arts Online. And we're on the project uh, to help disseminate the research to a wider audience, particularly the um, an audience interested in work by disabled artists. And we're also going to be supporting the end symposium at the end of the project. 
Great. Thank you, Trish. Um, and now I'm going to go to... Um, I, I, maybe I could go to Mona. Fantastic. Hi, Mona. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know that it's the time differences make it not morning anytime anyone's like... I keep saying good morning and it's not morning for many of you. Um, I am the development officer at Birds Paradise Theatre Company um, and yeah, really excited about the telepresence work and how we are weaving it into um, yeah a number of development projects um, here at BOP. <laughs> right. Thank you very much, Mona. Shall I just quickly quick, get some Mari as well? Um, there we go. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Mary. I'm the executive director of Birds Paradise Theatre Company. And uh, I work across all of our, our work, our development work, our theatre work and our strategic work. And I'm very delighted that this is an opportunity to, for us to pool various strands together and to have some of our international partners here. It's very exciting. I'm looking forward to the session. Great. Fantastic. Um, I've got a few here to go through. Would it be good to go to maybe go to uh, to sort of go through our Birds of Paradise um, members? We could go to Robert. Would that be okay? Hi, I'm Robert. I'm the Arctic Director and CEO at Birds of Paradise. Well, thanks for having me. Great. Fantastic, Robert. Really good to have you here. Um, we're going to go to your some of your your other partners and colleagues. Um, should we go through, should we go through um, Michelle? Should we go to Michelle quickly, quick first? Okay, Michelle, another from <laughs> Birds of Paradise. Um, today. Another Bob. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, lovely to see you all today, here today. It's really um, exciting to uh, learn a little bit more about this after hearing uh, information from Mona and Mary about the project. Um, I am the producer for Birds of Paradise and um excited to see how this could potentially work with some of the future projects that i'm involved in also my wi-fi is a little um sticky so i might turn my camera off for a bit while we're not being used in a room just no problem at all no problem at all that's fine that's fine it's, it, it is it is a bit been a bit sort of um as i say it's untested this so so apologies for the lip syncing delays we can see at the moment um it's a, it's simply an untested area we're using, using it with zoom um but this as you'll see in some demos this works absolutely fine um once once with a bit of when those sort of small problems are resolved um let me go now to um to our other um are we are we maybe we could go to uh is it saga saga if i pronounced your name correctly sega saga <laughs> it might be on hi the... everybody namaste i'm from Kathmandu, nepal and uh i work in my organization called diverse patterns we are a disability service provider and we also work in inclusive arts and help theater organize on how to make their work accessible. So I'm currently working, uh, starting to uh, do a project with Bob, and we will be making a um, library to drama where uh, we are hoping to see the uh, use of telepresence. So I'm here to learn about this technology. So thank you for having me here. Wonderful. Welcome. Great to have you here, Saga. Thank you. Let me just go back to our other screen. Lots of windows open. Um, so maybe I could go to quickly go to um, 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 is it I haven't mentioned Janet yet. Sorry, Janet. Also, is Janet, where are you from? You offer also some Bob or are you elsewhere in the world? Where are you? Um, I'm currently based in Edinburgh. I'm a uh, Bob member of Bob, another Bob <laughs> here. Um, very excited to be here. Um, I'm originally from Hong Kong, where I spent most of my career in disability arts and access, including working with um, the Arts with the Disabled Association Hong Kong. Um, we've got representatives here today. Well, I'm sure they'll introduce themselves later. So very happy to be here with everybody. Fantastic, thank you. Well, let's just go. Let's go to our, our partners in over in Hong Kong. Then we've got um, Kim and, and Hannah. There they are, and they've got their green screen. 
arranged with two with, with working with um two people in a in a um background segmentation situation doesn't always work as well as one <laughs> i'm not quite sure why but um if, if it's hannah or um uh, who else we got there and kim what one we got we can see one face anyway so tell us who you are and what we what you're doing hello hello everyone i'm kim and sit, sit next to me there should be hannah but you may not show well on the screen. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so we're based in Hong Kong and we work for the Ask with the Disabled Association. And so we serve the local uh, disabled pr uh, people and uh, mainly for their ask development. So uh, thanks for the Bob invitation for this project. And we hope we can bring along our artists to work with your team. Great. We're looking forward to hearing more about that and, and, and from, from our BOP colleagues and, and um, some of the conversations we've already had. So thank you very much. I'm not sure. Are we? Are we? Who else have we to introduce? Uh, I'm so Kerry still to say hello. I'm so sorry. Yeah, Kerry, please. Where are you? Where, where is Kerry? Uh, let me have a look on my list. Kerry. Fantastic. There we are. Sorry, Kerry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, also <laughs> The last of the bot staff crew here. Uh, I do admin and comms. Um, I've not been super involved in this project up to this point. I've just been kind of like watching it from a distance, going ooh. Um, so excited to learn more about it. Um, and then my my own arts practice outside BOP is a lot of like immersive and experimental theatre work. So I'm just really excited to see what everyone's doing. Right. Brilliant. Really looking forward to hearing more about that, Kerry. That's great. That's really good to have you on board today. We're going to go one more final participant. Just I'll inter I'd like to ask Tom to say a quick hello from Tom, who's our research technician uh, um, here at Brighton. Um, and then I'm going to go and I'll just quick hello from myself. Yes. Hello, everyone. As Paul says, uh, technical instructor at the university and supporting Paul on the telepresence project. Um, unfortunately for him today, he's in a different place and totally on his own with all this tech. So, good luck, Paul. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate that. Um, let me go back to this screen here um, and try and find my way around this little setup. Here we are. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so um, I should have. I, I'm sorry, I'm Paul Sermon. I'm um, the. the uh, Principal investigator here, based at the University in Brighton, um, and um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the, myself and well and the project together um, with Steve a little bit uh, later on this morning. Um, but just to say, um, I'm the sort of project project lead uh, based at the University of Brighton, um, where where I've been for for a number of years. My background is in is in digital performance, telematic and telepresence art forms practices and, and other others other activities and I, st I still create and exhibit my work as much as, as time time permits me to do so um in, in terms of my art practice but uh, more of that later a little little i shall mention a few things later on just to get us into this particular project so that takes us to um the, the next slide which i'm gonna now ask um Mona, um, Mari, I've got your slides here. So what I can do is, well, actually, what I wanted to do was to take you somewhere out of this, this um, uh, space here. If you just bear with me, I'm so, I'm sure we'll have this all working um, in just a moment. Uh, we'll bring Mari in, and I'm going to bring Mona in as well. So I think our first slide is on Miranda and Caliban. Yeah. And then okay. our second one is on Locked World. Um, so I'm going to, Miranda and Caliban will definitely be Mary chatting more than I, because I was not part of Bot at that point. Okay. Well, what I've got you, so what I've got you set up here. So Mary, so Mary, so I, I, I put you in the Kelvin Grove Pavilion uh, just to make you feel a little bit more at home. Um, Cause I thought that might be more, a bit more fitting for your, for your talk. So what I can do is we can zoom in a little bit. Get you get you positioned up here. Here we go. We can see your see your screen now, and um, so these are the sorts of things we can play around with. So we can go straight to the um, a bit larger view of the screen. Here we go, um, and I can control I can control your slides. So what I'll do is I'll go straight to your 
as you say, your first slide that Mari's got, I think we'll, we'll know more about the Miranda and Caliban project. Okay, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to see what I can say about this, considering <laughs> 2016 feels like a an absolute lifetime ago. Um, Miranda and Caliban was a project. One of the first things I did when I joined um, Bob, and it was already established, and I became involved in the in the delivery of it. <clears throat> which was quite epic to get my head around because we had um, a, a team on the ground in Hong Kong where the majority of the live performance was happening. Um, and we also had a small element taking place in Glasgow um, with two characters in a sort of, um, in fact, Taliban being interviewed in a sort of TV studio setup. And this was then um, beamed into the the performance in in Hong Kong. So obviously we were dealing we were dealing with a massive amount of, of time difference, but we wanted to create a good experience at both ends. In Hong Kong, there was more happening on stage. That's where the majority of the you know the, the theatrical experience was. It was a big audience. Um, there was the usual kind of um, bop consideration around access. So there was sign language interpretation taking place in Hong Kong. I think there was possibly captions. I'm not, I'm not sure. But these are all elements that we um, design and embed into, uh, into our work uh, consistently. And then in Glasgow, we had this um, TV studio sort of set up in the CCA, a small um, audience in Glasgow. Uh, and then this was um, transmitted um, to um, a screen to the stage uh, in, in Hong Kong. Um, so it was quite... For its time, it felt um, quite quite out there and quite an achievement, and especially considering we were um, doing it for the first time uh, ourselves. Um, and we've got a list of sort of some of the the different um, the different statistics here of the show being split across these two um, two locations, all the different sign language involved and um, different languages involved. So the need for different sign languages, different subtitles. Um, and um, we also obviously had online audiences from other locations, which um, was unusual at the time, I suppose. It would be something that taken kind of, you know, taken for granted now, people coming into a Zoom room to, to watch something. And I frankly don't know how we did that. Robert might be able to jump in and um, tell me how we did that online viewing, because I'm not sure what platform or if that was just streaming it maybe through YouTube or Facebook at the um at, at the time. Um and so yes, and we had no wired internet connection. Gosh, that makes me feel a little bit sick. I think it's all coming back to me actually. Um, so we had a, a lot of a lot of stress about the connectivity um, and and making it work as well. Um, so yeah, we tried something quite quite big, quite experimental with without the kind of the stable setup that we would now be we would now be used to. Um, but it was a, it was a it was a very exciting moment for us, and it was really exciting to have that sense of two live audiences connecting up and sharing an, an experience together um, mm. gave us a definite taste for thinking thinking about that um, in the future. Although we did have to, we needed to recover a little while um, after this. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you want to just, it's the next slide. Did Robert want to say anything about that as well? Like, I don't know whether you wanted to, you mentioned I mean, the, the only thing you mentioned is that it was all going to be escape, which now feels like a really ridiculous thing to do. But back in 2016, there was no Zoom, there wasn't, you know, escape was the, the most capable way to do it. It was going to be escape in a lot of uh, WhatsApp message groups that make the whole thing happen behind the scenes. It was very much, um, DIY um, work that, yeah, it's no great funny to look back at. Great. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. I mean, it it, it is, uh, as is this, quite DIY. <laughs> we haven't tried this before. Um, but, uh, but, but this particular Zoom setup, rather like your situation with Skype and working, as you say, working with, um, without any kind of wire, wired connections using Wi-Fi and 4G or whatever it was at the time it, it does it does present a lot of lot of te uh, uh, technical um issues to resolve okay we'll, we can go back to your your next your next slide if is that good you happy for me to go back on to 
Locked Worlds, I think Mona or, or Grand. So another substantial piece of digital arts work that we've done recently has been a website called Locked World. Um Locked World is it's an accessibility, well, I it's kind of my way that I like to describe it is that it is a disability centered um digital art space. Um, it's an online body mind of creative disabled experience. Um, it's a space where there are all these digital artworks and they all have accessibility embedded into them. So some of them have embedded captions. Um, most of them have um, sign language interpretation. Most of them have audio description. All of the works have transcripts available. Um, there's It's a website that is chock full of stuff. Um, and also the whole the whole website. So I'm getting a bit discombobulated because I can't see myself. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's fine. Um, the whole of the website can be adapted to the individual's access requirements. So we designed this website to be as accessible as it could possibly be for as many people as possible. Um, and it's, I think it's a brilliant piece of work, and it's really exciting. Um, that we are still adding to it. Um, I think everyone probably has a link to Locked World, um, but also, Paul, if you were to click on 2023 onwards within that slide, it would take us to the website for Locked World. Oh, um, okay. We can maybe have a wee poke around. I don't know if that works on... I'll see what I can do. I will. Um, I can cut to this screen here. Yeah, yes. I can go to there. Fabulous. So this is when we enter. Um, there's this lovely introductory video. We won't play this video because it won't play well in terms of bandwidth and, and moving that around. It'll get really glitchy and be really difficult to, to watch. Um, so if we just hit the skip button, Paul, there should be a skip button in the bottom right of the screen. Skip the introduction video. Um, each person is then they have this um, onboarding process. So that video um, introduces everybody to the website and what it is. Um, it's led by a performer um, who's using BSL. There's then, um, there's audio over the top of it, which is um, interpreting the BSL into spoken English. Um, there's also subtitles, also captions at the bottom. Um, and it talks you through how the website works. Um, you then go into this section where you've got your all your different access options. This is the access panel um, where you can choose your cookies options. Um, I think there's seven stages in this, in this part. So you can do no cookies or local cookies, and there's little um sort of indications of what all what all of them, all of these stages mean. Um I don't know if you want to hop through them, Paul. Yeah, sure, sure. See, there's a text size, typeface, um, background color. They want it on a dark background or a light background. There's additional um, content that has captions in, in British Sign Language, and um, which you can turn on or you can you can keep it off. But the default is that it's on. And that felt important. Um, animations for the website, they can be off or they can be on if that's useful um, to you to support your access requirements. Um, there's also, you can have the sounds on or off. Um, the default is off so that people aren't, you know, their senses aren't bombarded um, without their consent. Um, and then if you enter the brain, we then are taken to the homepage um, of Locked World. Um, and it says on the left hand side, welcome to the brain. Each part, each page of Locked World exists in a different area of this collective online brain. Navigate through this work, this world by using the buttons on the brain. Um, and then you've got your different artworks and different areas of the website. Um, you can you're free to explore Locked World at your leisure. It's open to everybody all the time, whenever you feel. Um uh, this this is a page that gives you one of the artworks, which is called This Is Not a Piece About My Disability. 
Um, and as you can see, you've got the artwork there and the transcript, and then you've got more artworks at the bottom. Um, and so this just shows what what we did with Locked World. Um, and this is where um, the piece that we're making with the with ADHK um, for Spark Festival will will live. It will exist somewhere on this brain. Um, that that's where the kind of the interactive part can come in, which feels it'll be much clearer as we as we talk through it. But I don't want to talk too much about that right now, um, just because this is thinking about previous examples um, of artworks. I think currently there are seven artworks um, in the, on the Locked World website. Um, these three, which are here, which are highlighted in pink, are the most, um, that's the most recent release of the artworks. If you go to the menu um, and there's an artworks overview page, that will show you the full the, the full list of, of all the artworks which are currently available to watch on the site and engage with on the site. Excellent, fantastic. And obviously you can see at the top of the page, you've got those um, sort of quick access buttons where you've got home, access panel, menu, sensory space, and the exit. So the access panel means you can adapt and change your access options whenever you need. Um, so if you decided, actually, it might be useful for me to have the text size a bit bigger, then you could adjust it there. Um, if you would rather have the typeface be the one which is not dyslexia friendly, um, if that's not useful for you to be able to, if you can't read it that way, then that's fine. You can change it there. You can close the access panel and go back to, and go back to the main website. There's also a sensory space, um, which you can visit, um, which just gives you a chance to, it's a space for, for re-regulation, um, for regulating your senses, um, where you don't have to like jump away from the computer in order to like re-regulate. You can still be on the website and, and find a way to re-regulate. Um, there's a sensory space there, but then there's also other, other types of sensory spaces um, listed under the about section. Um, and one of the things that we we decided to do with this website was to have an offboarding process as well, um, which mirrors the onboarding process that happens when you enter the website. So there's a, an offboarding um, process that happens when you hit exit. Um, rather than just hitting the cross, if you hit the exit button, then you have another um, video um, with the lovely Amy. Um, who takes you through um, the offboarding process? Again, we won't watch that video, um, yeah. but just to see it on screen is quite is quite nice. Um, and so she basically brings you gradually back into reality. As you can see there, the first thing that she says is, you know, what is the well the the thing that's on the screen just now is that she asks what the current temperature is. Um, how hot or cold is the air on your skin? So it's just about really bringing you back into the present moment, um, so that you can then continue on with your day and in back into your concrete reality, rather than this um, having been in this online um, creative body mind um, space. So that's a sort of quick, super quick tour of locked world. Um, and yet happy to kind of chat more um, about, yeah, if anyone has any questions about Locked World and how it came about or anything like that. Great, Seth. And one of the things you're thinking of doing, well, we'll talk, we'll come to it later perhaps as well, but is to use Locked World as a potentially as a kind of portal or interface to a live work that that wanting to develop with the, with this particular telepresence stage project that that yeah. in some ways locked world becomes the kind of um yeah the host host for that for that live event to happen is that would that be a kind of i mean a lot of the work that is already on there is very much about record re documented works and such so would this would this be what some of the sort of first sort of live work you've explored within within this locked world environment or have you yeah. It would be, it would be because any of the events that we've had um, that have been associated with Locked World have taken place on Zoom. Mm. Um, and that's always just been, it's been live sort of um, accompanying events um, and like industry-based events. But in terms of a live piece, a piece of artwork, which has live elements, 
that would be the first that would be the first one um that'll be part of Lock World, which is is really, really exciting. Great. Okay. Wonderful. I'll take you to the next your next slide. We can go into this one. Grand. So this was just a sort of a base slide um, for thinking about the Locked World Commission's 2024, um, which we put a proposal in um, to the British Council um, in partnership with Arts with the Disabled Association Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, delighted that Kim and Hannah are here with us today. Um, that's brilliant. Um, so it's to create a piece of, in fact, I think if we hop to the next slide, I think I've got like a little description of what the ask is. Yes, so we are, BOT and ADHK are going to commission a deaf, disabled and or neurodivergent Hong Kong artist to create a piece of accessible, interactive digital storytelling utilising telepresence technologies. Um, so this is really looking at how we can utilise telepresence in BOP development in the space of a, a production, um, a BOP development production um, as part of Locked World. Um, I think the next slide hopefully helps to kind of like break down a bit of how it might work. So the in-person experience, so at the Spark Festival um, in Hong Kong, um, which is taking place in October, um, we'll have two spaces um, which will will be in-person spaces. So space one will be a space that you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here, um, where there'll be a, a computer with a webcam um, and a person in that space. And we're calling them the sort of active audience. Um, so they will be, their webcam image will be captured and placed into um, a, a story, essentially. Um, as you can see on this little screen on the left-hand side, very much the way in which me and, and Rob and Mary are, are on the screen right now, um, we've been placed into this, this space. So then you can see that in space two on the right-hand side, um, there, there will be a, a large sort of um, cinema screen um, where an audience that we're calling the passive audience, um, that they will be able to watch the person who, the active audience member, they'll be able to see them in this, this story, story space that's been created, this digital visual artwork that's been created. So they'll be able to see them there. The beautiful thing about this is that that active audience member is only going to be in that sort of booth um, with that laptop for about three minutes because um, the, the piece of video is only going to be three minutes long. They might stay there for a couple of rounds of it or they might just stay there for one round and then they can come out and then maybe someone who's been in that passive audience might then go into that, um, that booth and become the active audience member. So they can then see themselves in that screen and know that that passive audience are, can see them there. Um, and there might only be space for one for one person, one participant to be in that video space. There might be space for two. We don't know yet because we've not commissioned the artist yet who's going to make the piece of work. Um, so that's still very much open for discussion. Um, and then if we hop to the next slide, this shows us the remote experience. Um, so this is sort of when an audience member comes to the Locked World website. Mm. Page one is the space where they will be the active audience member and they can go in and they can, using their own device um, or whatever device they're using, they then step into that visual storytelling world. And then there'll be another option for just watching that piece and being that passive audience on this kind of a second page, if you will, on the Locked World website, where the passive audience can be hooked up to their own remote, their own device and watching the storytelling experience. And as I say, that storytelling experience, the image that's on screen at that point, it could be that there's just one person who is in Hong Kong and is live there on screen. It could be that there's two people it could be that sometimes there's one person live there and then there's some kind of filler image on the second person 
Um, it's, I mean, it's all to play for, depending on the the artist that that we commission and what and what their ideas are about how how that can how telepresent storytelling can be used, like how the telepresent technologies can be used to communicate their idea and their piece of storytelling. Mm. And hopefully that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think I think um, my colleagues who who, are, who know this software and opportunities will will immediately see how this potentially could could work very well with with the telepresence stage approach, um, and and I think is really it's very useful and, and exciting for us to have a kind of um, sort of concrete <laughs> um, project direction that you want to work towards this this event the sparks festival in hong kong um you talked about the, the location even being a kind of shopping center i think in in hong kong and this kind of notion of this sort of sort of um booth sort of green screen opportunity in a, in a public space for people to go and experience this to this this short little narrative piece one of the things that that perhaps in your slide um it, the, the, in addition to what you suggested that we can talk about is to have that and maybe, maybe that is in, maybe that is implied and forgive me if, if I have missed it but but another participant who is remote and not in Hong Kong could be in that mix with that person or even more people could be in that mix there could be uh, don't don't judge this by, by the by the zoom attempts today where it's very delayed we, we, we can get this working much much faster and in sync so please don't worry about that. But but you can have up to eight people in in VMix if you wanted to, who could be online. There could be one person in Hong Kong, another seven people in different places. All all could be combined in this in this kind of performance piece. Yeah. Um, so it can be more. Yeah, which is really exciting, and I think that's definitely something that will um, that Bob and DHK will chat about with the commissioned artist. Um, and yeah, it's it's not massively clear. Um, within these slides and that's really useful for me to know what's not clear um so that we can kind of refine it um because i think it'd be as useful well i personally always find it useful to have a visual um and i think it's always good to have options for different people's learning styles um mm. but oh there's something else that's in my brain there that I was going to say and i can't remember what it was now no problem um <laughs> what was it Oh yes, that's is something a, a significant consideration that we'll, we will be making is to do with the time difference, um, and the fact that audiences will be engaging in person in Hong Kong while like in the shopping centre, which is open for like a good a good amount of the day, um, but also in terms of how how a UK audience um, or audience members around the rest of the world engage with that. Um, mm -hmm. And with those spaces for different humans to be present live in that telepresence situation, I think there's there's quite a lot of um, yeah conversation and, and working out to be had around that and whether there are maybe some pre-recorded elements as well as some live elements. Um, but yeah, it'd be really useful to to discuss that. Um, and it's probably a discussion that we'll have with the commissioned artist um, once they've been recruited um into the project mm -hmm. i think also morna it's true that it, we're not thinking about it just as a live experience in hong kong there's also the chance that there'll be people interacting with it in the t in the same time zone but online not yes at the same center. so yes there, there, there's that as well that you know within within hong kong there will be a physical present audience and potentially a virtual audience as well yes I mean, one of the things to think about here, the thoughts, so, and please do put hands up if you wanted to jump, to jump in. I can see, but 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 the conversation is that it, the, the opportunity here is also that because this is online, essentially it it could run it could run twenty four hours because you it potentially, and with the kind of reach that that uh, disability arts online have and, Tr and, with, and Trisha's work, the kind of participant the sort of access they have, it could well be that the, the kind of online traffic may be all around the world that, that could actually access this at any time they wanted. There might be specific times where your commit where your um, partners in in in, in um, at BOP um, in Scotland or across elsewhere in the UK 
may want to engage with it at, at, their, at their convenient times for them. But there might be very in- inconvenient times where we might have somebody in, in um in Australia or South America or somewhere else in the world that, that might want to participate in this particular piece with, with the people in, in, and of course the Hong Kong element, there'll be periods of time when they, when there'll be nobody there as well, because it will be closed. It will be night times, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that participants elsewhere couldn't be doing the project. So it could literally run uh, uh, if it was coordinated over the, the three days of the festival to run completely the whole time. And you could even, um, get people to sign up for it in advance. So actually people are there waiting to do their little slot and their performance piece in this, in this design space that, 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 that you've created. So we can talk about some of that in a moment, but yeah, so anything's possible. Um, do you want to go to the next, go to the next slide? We're going to show you some demos as well later on. And hopefully I know that, Mari and Mona have both had it had had the opportunity to have this demo, but then but they'd like some other colleagues to have a little little play around with it. We can to give a good sense of what might be possible. So let's move to your final slide, penult- penultimate slide, I think. Mm. Um, so this is a, a separate project. Um, this is the Unlimited International Commission that we are involved with with our partner Cigar in um, Nepal. And we're thinking about using telepresence very differently here. It's interesting, Paul, that you just mentioned Morna and I having our first demo with you, however many months ago that was. <clears throat> and it was a bit of a light bulb moment for us. As, and, and I think you will have experienced onboarding people to this experience many times and them getting that moment of going, ah, this is what it is and this is what the potential is. And one of the things Morna and I were particularly interested in was just this experience of embodiment and bringing people together in, in a virtual space um, for, you know, it could be creative interactions, it could be development opportunities, it could be all sorts of different things. But we frequently work with um, uh, disabled artists who, for whatever reason, are not are not present with us physically. And so we saw this amazing opportunity of bringing, being able to bring people together. The other thing that we've been increasingly doing is working internationally and of course a zoom room is a very is a very dry space if you're trying to um move more into creative practice or exploring ideas and so we saw the unwrap project as an opportunity to um experiment with this sense of bringing people together in a more um embodied way um, because the first part of this project we will go out to Nepal next April and it's going to culminate in us making um, a piece of work um, a radio play with um, partners on the ground there but in the run-up to that and through the development of the piece we're going to be bringing together artists from Nepal and Scotland to explore um, narrative and ideas together and really just to connect them up and network them. And it's that element um, that we want to use telepresence for so that we can create um, experiences and explore ideas in, in different ways. Um, and just we're excited about the sort of the, the, the channels that, that that offers us for a much more, um, a much more embodied ex- and experimental space, you know, so there's that, we, we all now feel we understand what it is to go into a Zoom room and, and talk to people and, and you know, and, and be there. But I think this gives us an opportunity to create a different experience that will be, will be surprising um, and will hopefully then um, <clears throat> instigate um, avenues within the work that otherwise we, we, wouldn't, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't experience. So we're not seeing this as creating a final artwork. We're, we're looking at this much more as using the technology through a through a creative process earlier within a, a project and seeing what it can unlock for us and and what it can do for us in that context and um, rather than sort of putting it um engaging with an audience or putting it um into a final into a final piece of work we're much more interested in that that early stage mm. creative and relationship building um, um processes mm. or no, is there anything i've missed there that you'd like to add <clears throat> I don't think so. I think that's covered it really well. Um, I think the next slide we've got is actually just a little, ex- basically exactly kind of what Mary said about what it's going to be. Um, 
So yeah, just the kind of detail of it, um, that it's telepresence used in bot development, but as part of a process. Um, and there will be five um, disabled Nepalese artists um, and five disabled Scottish artists. Um, and as Maddie said, sharing space and sharing stories um, through a series of online workshops. Um, and it will begin the creation of a live radio drama to be, for, be performed in Nepal in 2025, which is just all really exciting stuff. Um, and yeah, we're delighted to be able to connect these projects up with using using telepresence um, to support and facilitate that. Mm. I mean, I think what we, the um, the project and, and your your involvement in the in this residency program also will also provide you with the resources to um, to undertake some of these sorts of things and achieve these sorts of things in the in the workshops that you want to do beyond beyond the life of the you know the existence of this project and that's what we're really really um wanting to to encourage and, and we would like to see to see happen that that this these resources could be used in a in a in a wide uh, variety of ways that might be a kind of um audio or vis visual um description audio description and that sort of thing video visuals visuals that that provide a context for this kind of radio drama to be used so it may be that the the, the kind of telepresence aspect as you say is the the, the 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 audio is perhaps the primary source of, of 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 the of the creative practice in this particular piece but but the visuals may be there to support that and we can do all sorts of things with it with, with this technology so yeah it takes it in a, in a very different direction which is very exciting and we're happy to to, to continue support supporting that as well you know um beyond the project but also in 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 hong kong yeah. for sure well i think with the um with the work in nepal and um, with the unwrap project and um, the development that part of the process um the process will take place in sort of september october um so it's definitely still within our within our residency time um so hopefully timelines wise that will that'll all work out really well um because we'll be using the telepresence technologies for the process um as opposed to that the final production as our current thinking on it i mean that might that might change as we as we get into um as we get into it but that's that's our feeling on it and where we would like to apply that work the most great that sounds really good that's um what i'm going to suggest we do now is um uh, on there um i'm going to cut back to this one here i think that's your last slide isn't it that was the last slide we're now going to have a quick break <laughs> the next slide. although we're running a little bit late but i think we should have a quick maybe we should have a short break i think i think that's what, what we take what we aim to do so if we could um should we make it a five minute break would that be all right should we back back at 25 past or does it need 10 minutes what's the what's there a view on that to make it 20 past That's fine with me. Twenty past, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, five minutes. Let's, let's resume back in twenty in in five minutes. You can pause, pause, and 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 mute cameras and mics, whatever you wish. Hello, is everyone back? Can I hear everyone? <laughs> we are. There we is. Okay. So I've got Steve and I are going to do a short little um, presentation. Well, a few slides just to sort of just to recap on on the um, on the telepresence stage project. Apologies, Steve, for uh, not sharing these slides in advance with you, um, but you will um, you'll you'll recognise them. And I think there's a short little if the demo video works. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, given the delays, the sort of slight sort of technical hiccups with Zoom here. But um, but let's just take you through a few of these. Um, slides just to sort of give you a bit of um background to the project uh what we wanted to do was to just to give you a little bit just an overview of how this project worked and and then this demo we're going to show afterwards is really going to help that but essentially this the, the difference normally <laughs> between zoom here on the on this in this slide um up here on the far left, you'll see the kind of model of the Zoom sort of setup in that we're all confined within these little boxes. And um, 
the model on to the to the right of that is where we take those boxes and combine them all into the same box. And that's really as simple as that. That's the sort of very simple <laughs> um, approach that we're taking. So rather than all appearing appearing in our own little boxes, we attempt to to, to put everybody into the same space, which really lends itself to theatre. Um, that idea of that coexistent space, that stage space. Um, and the, perhaps one of the best metaphors for explaining that is the paper theatre. We think of the paper theatre as the kind of ex the, the existing with sort of 2D layers of, of traditional sort of stage set design as in backdrop and wings and foreground objects and a kind of upstage and downstage and scaling in terms of how movement around the stage occurs. We can do this very very much the same thing if we think about video as a 2D layer or as, as a number of 2D layers. So that's the, that, that is really the concept of the project. That's li literally all we're trying to do here. And that really was born out of our um, situation in the pandemic and looking at lots of companies, theatre companies, um, who were desperately trying to find an alternative or were really exploring the possibilities of Zoom, but finding out that there were certain limitations um, or... or it opened up new and innovative ways of working, for sure, for sure. But it may it may have also we, we want we wanted to find for certain companies who took to who had a very theatrical background, really hadn't used technology this sort of technology before. It, it didn't feel fit for purpose. Did you want to add anything to that, Steve? Do you think that that's fair to say, or were there other? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Zoom became a kind of medium of its own for the, for theatre companies. Uh, during during COVID and and, and understandably uh, so, but it, it it remained very frustrating. I think both for the performers and and the actors that even though you can sort of pretend to be in the in the same space, um, because you're not full figure, uh, that's the limitation. You know, on a on a theatre stage, you are full figure. You can <clears throat> you know inter interact with 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 one another. But then we, suddenly in this sort of television. Um, you know, talking talking headspace. Of course, you, you know you can get a a, a, a fully a fuller body by moving moving back or um, or, or whatever. But ge generally, it's a close up me medium uh, is, is Zoom. So it was, it was working like television rather than than theatre. And with the telepresence stage, because you have the full figure, uh, and, and and you're brought together within virtual settings and virtual uh, back backgrounds and so on. That uh, at least sort of illusion of um, of real time interaction in a in a real shared space uh, be, become becomes a re reality, albeit it's telematic. So it was kind of it was squaring the squaring the circle, circle a bit and and getting over the the limit the limitations and frustrations that many uh, many actors and and performance companies uh, felt. Mm, yeah, I can't remember what the next slide is, Steve. Forgive me. So yes, I just wanted to quickly just just quickly just give you a bit of background to my to, to this. It's my own work here in very early work. Hi, sorry, the... sorry to interrupt, Paul. Um, sure. I think Sagar's in the waiting room, so I think he went ah. out of the meeting and came back in, so if you could absolutely, let me know. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank of you, course. sorry for interrupting. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sagar, are you there? I think I've let... I've, I've let let him in now. Should be joining us any minute. Saga, are you there? Yes, sir. Wonderful. You're there. Sorry about that. I, I do apologise for not letting you in earlier. <laughs> but anyway, you're here now. Fantastic. So I'll, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background to some of the some of the work that I've done, uh, and uh, very very early early on, some of the some of these works working between video installation gallery you know, digital performance arts installation video installation work um and that's really where a lot of my background comes from and um this particular work has been shown a lot and talked about a lot in terms of one of the sort of pieces of work that starts to discuss ideas about presence and telepresence um by projections of of a of, of a of a performer or a person a gallery uh, um, visitor 
who's lying on a bed, is projected on another bed, and then a camera ca captures the image and sends it back again. So I've been working in this field for many, many years. So that's really where, where these interests began and they continue. Um, I just wanted to share another quick, oh, back to that slide there. I've done works that, that are very, using similar set, set, not techniques and technologies what what we're using today, um, but in kind of more installation and gallery settings, um, literally working with just sofas and screens and very simple situations and um, really trying to sort of combine that in that particular piece, combine that relationship between screen and sofa um, as a kind of inseparable um, scenario experience of of experience of experience of television and the self in 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 television um at, with with participating with others and i'm very interested in ideas about disembodiment and re-embodiment and i use this metaphor of heidegger the sort of phenomenologists um ex experiment with the with with tools um that are extensions of our bodies and I'm very interested in this idea about tools being extensions of the body, extensions of self, uh, and actually we we disembody and re-embody ourselves in 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 telepresent states and forms. So that's where the ideas have come from for many many years. Steve has also written about this for a long time and 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 undertaken another performance project similarly. Um, sorry, I haven't included some of your your work, Steve. I know that you've done a lot of work with this, with your companies in the area of using, or even going back as far as um, see you, see me software and all sorts of different things and playing around with stuff back in the early, early, early 90s and late 80s as well. So along came the, pan the pandemic and we did pandemic and one of the first experiments was with, in partnership with a group called Third Space Network in Washington, DC, where in May, 2020, we were turning our homes into into our working spaces, and I, in my in my situation, it, I was turning my home into a green screen studio, and collaborating with artists and trying to sort of mix and combine and perform with, with particular performing artists actually. So this was something where we were inviting perform performance artists around the world to to communicate with with me in a in a in a, in a, in a performance piece. Um, and similarly, I worked with Steve on this particular piece. Um, a, a few months later, in November 2020, called um, Telematic Quarantine. And this also invited, this This actually did use Skype. Robert, you mentioned earlier on, um, using Skype in that one of those first projects. This also used Skype and uh, with, with a combination of VJing software, hugely complicated with the amount of software we were involved with this. Um, but... Um, yeah, so so um and I and Steve joined me from Singapore to visit me in my home um uh, with other um colleagues, performers in Singapore, where we explored improvised little vignettes pieces. And I gave some some short instructions to Steve and other people. I said, I'm at home on my own, I'm I'm in quarantine, I'm sort of in need of of, of, of a visit, really. Um my, my mental health is suffering. I'm 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 feeling a little, you know, I uh, offer these all sort of opportunities for opportunities to play and explore a theme. And um Steve, you you arrived and you brought your particular performance to this. <laughs> Tell us a bit what you what you who you were in my house. Ah. Uh, well, uh, myself and Felipe uh, there, the, the the other guy. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Paul Paul in the picture is in the in the dressing gown, uh, so he's like kind of bit a bit poorly and uh, and depressed. And and so uh, Felipe and I turned up, and we were uh, we sort of played uh, Pinteresque characters, a little bit a little bit threatening, uh, and and sort of we, we decided we'd sort of um, maybe make Paul responsible for the pandemic, and that maybe he'd. He cooked it up in his in his own house as a um, you know there was there was uh, a smells coming from coming from the house and so on. So whilst it was actually a spontaneous improvisation, we just kind of came with sort of characters who had a bit of menace, but were also funny, um, and and just played with it with this uh, this idea that maybe Paul uh, was responsible uh, for for all this, which we thought uh, would would be fun, uh, and and Paul responded with sort of. I remember there was an acupuncture scene at, at, at one point. Sort of, he was ac acupuncturing my my head and my my body and so on. So it was. Oh, 
uh, series of, of sequences. Great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Steve. Um, we've got um short, I think that there's a, a maybe this video will work, but uh, but um so then then after that, that was really the pilot study for this project. So then we work with the with the nine companies. I'm gonna go full screen on here because it's easier to show you this full screen. Um with the nine companies we worked with, um we these were the companies we did, and, and they had each company had about three or up to sometimes only two performers involved in separate locations and in their homes and studios and sometimes up to three up to three or four and sometimes even involved audience participants um coming in on zoom calls not with this not not embedded within vmix like we are today but actually in a different bit of software <laughs> another bit of another experiment all these things are a little bit of an improvised fix as you probably experienced with using zoom and other other platforms with vmix the most the most stable system is actually just using the pure vmix system and i think that's what i would recommend in many ways but let's just show you if i got a i think this is a show reel i'm not sure how well this is going to work but let's just try and run um this particular um show reel bear with me a moment where is it somewhere here um there we go. So the first little clip is actually from the tele from from the the pilot study that um, I undertook with Steve uh, together the the um, um, telematic quarantine project. So this should give you a bit of audio as well. I hope audio is playing back for you. Well, come on, open up. Wait a minute. Push, push it on. Yeah. Push it on. He's like the chief medical officer here in England, and he he. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Sorry, there's a little bit of tobacco there. Oh, I see. Is it? Is this about my foot on the table? Yeah. Hey! I'm in the corridor. Where are the children? Everything remains open and unending and faintly ridiculous. Oh, if you must, Gemma. Just delivering people where they're going. Yeah, well, I'm just a taxi driver. Even if it's at uh, the edge of misery. a radio call from none other than Getcha Bear. We think that Doug used his tea towel to wrap it around Albert's neck. And I strangled him with my binocular strap. A washerwoman washes rats. Scrub, scrub, scrub. She was still there when I went to bed. There we go. So let me just go back to um, 
right to there. That was the that's our show reel. Um, so yeah, th- I hope hopefully that came through for you on there. Apologies, it is on the web website. If the, if the quality isn't quite as good as uh, what you would you would have hoped um, with the sound and the synchronization with the sound and the video. Um, yeah, there were a lot of experimentation going on and and um, quite different approaches and techniques uh, that people that, that different companies used and explored. Um, if, for example, the last one was with involved rostrum cameras and live. That was all live drawing happening um, and, and, and sort of painting with blue and green paints to chroma key things out. Um, and a lot of the companies hadn't ever used digital technologies before. Some of them just sort of just sort of, tempt, just sort of started as the pandemic began, but a lot of them didn't have any experience of, of using digital work. And I think it was really quite exciting and interesting to see the sorts of things they wanted to develop and and the, the ways we could we could try and um, support them. So, and one company particularly with um, the the creation theatre based in Oxford, they they successfully continued to keep their actors in employment. Um, by by turning to digital and doing a lot of stage, a lot of digital productions, um, and and uh, exploring some of the techniques we used here, and that pe- that scene with the card players, they actually had physical green tables <clears throat> as well involved in the piece that they used. So it wasn't just backdrops; it was objects. So they really gave themselves a sense of of three dimensional space that they hadn't really explored before. They'd never they'd always what they referred to. They'd always performed to the camera. To the lens, they they'd never really performed with each other in a kind of uh, in a kind of space where they felt they, they they could acknowledge each other as as they're within within the actual theatrical space. And we 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 did that just by using screens and positioning screens in different places to force the 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 gaze or the view of the performer to a space that they they, they could find the spot, as it were, in television talk, but to talk to. But actually, that spot was a person. Um, in there, so I don't know. Uh, that was a very successful piece. That one with with them. So I, I carry on. Steve, did you want to say? Anything? No, I, I mean I just uh, echo what you said about about the kind of diversity of approaches, and you'll see, you know, that um, I mean, uh, Paul, you know, Paul and the team team were w- working hard to sort of uh, help create a lot of the of the virtual backgrounds. So um, certain companies would would sort of would come up with a suggestion and then uh, uh, largely Paul would you know would cre- would create those those backgrounds but it it was interesting how how many different kind of styles um pe- pe- people people went went for they saw you know this kind of very jazzy uh, sort of x factor set with the with the girl you know the the women women sing, singing there which was one uh, kind of interesting approach and then you had um, that that corridor where that was filling up with 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 water um, and so on, and actually, that that was Pigeon Theatre who said, "Nope." Oh, so if we can, so yeah, so it was it was inter- interesting to yeah to you know to see, to see all that. So I think I've got a bit of an interrupted network there. If I slightly, Steve, yeah, don't worry. Thank okay. you. Thanks. That's very helpful. I'll, I'll so what I'll do now. I quickly want to just do a little demo, <laughs> if this works. I'm going to do a little demo piece of this um, uh, Boom Hill or High Water project. I've got to put another bit of now for this particular piece. I use another bit of software to add a little 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 digital effect. Don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll soon soon find out. Um, but let's have a look and see what we're doing, how, how well we get on. So you should be seeing a slight, slightly different effect here. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to put in, I need two volunteers for this particular piece. Um, we will put in, um, how about, um, well, more than Mari, who would you like, who would you like me to, to sort of put into the, into this particular piece from your, from your, uh, uh, um, would it be your your partners in Hong Kong or in Nepal or how would you? Is there anyone that would like to volunteer themselves? I think whoever feels excited and comfortable uh, to to do it. I mean, I've I've had a chance to be in it before, so I'm I'm happy not um, unless no one else wants to. In which case, I can. Um, 
Could I? I'm wondering whether Saga. Can I put you in 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 there? I think Sagar is taking a ten minute break. Okay, fine, no problem, no problem at all. Um, I don't know if if, if I don't know if Sagar's still around. If you are, feel free to. How about in. what? What I could think I could get one of you. Which we'll try, Kim. Michelle, could Anna. I suggest you try it? Yeah, sure. Just if you've not had the experience and you'll be working with it. Who's that? Michelle. Um, Michelle. 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 Let's get Michelle in. Fantastic. Okay. Excellent. Let's do that then. So Michelle, let's bring you in one moment. And then maybe Kim and Hannah, would that work? Yeah, if Kim that, and Hannah... That's fantastic. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now take this up to here um, and bring in um, Oh no. Sorry. Source. We're going to put in um, Kim and Hannah. And then we're going to put into this one Michelle. Let's type Michelle. Now this lasts about um now it's it's it is made for one person in the screen. So so Kim and Hannah may find they might have to sort of move a little a little bit, share the screen. So one, one could move in and one could the other one could move in and move in and out. So so you, you might you might not get both of you in at the same time. So you might want to sort of sort of take turns if you like. So let's try and let's try and do this. Now I'm going to run it through. It, it lasts about 17 minutes, if that's all right. I hope that's okay. <laughs> let's try and run through. It is a piece of work called Coombe Hill or High Water that I made that is completely online. It runs in a way, it's all automated. The whole thing is automated. So once I press a button, the whole thing runs to a script and it goes through a series of scenes of, 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 of places that you encounter each other and it's entirely up to you how you how you choose to improvise and react to this um it's an unusual title and i'll perhaps just explain it later but let's go for it let's see if it works just a wee note paul i think kim and hannah have mentioned that they might need to leave um in about 13 minutes so they may have to no problem at all no problem at all yeah but just kim and hannah let us know if you need to jump away because that's absolutely fine <laughs> there we go so you suddenly turn up in these strange spaces. I can't speed up the scenes. The scenes, the things last for a, for a minute or so each, I think. So are we in a sink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are you are you are actually you're coming perhaps towards the end of the sequence. So um, in the, the moment you'll find yourself at the beginning. This is perhaps even at the end, but never mind. Um, that's a kind of let's call it a, a dreamlike state <laughs> where you end up. So you do it. You do start off in this bedroom, um, and you do appear in a. It's a rather depressing place because everything there seems to be a lot of rubbish sort of washed up in the bedroom. We're not quite sure why. Now I'm using a filter in here from another different from a different program just just to give you that slightly hand drawn cartoony effect. I'm bringing in that through 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 a bit of um, VJing software. I'm adding into the mix. Now it does appear to be a bit slow because we're running this through Zoom and all sorts of things. But when it runs normally through just through VMix, it's all it's all very the the latency is very 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 little. So it's it's much faster, and you can talk. You can of course talk to each other. But anyway, you discover yourselves in this space. You obviously you may have met. You know you could use this to sort of meet up, have a meeting. You might want to have a sort of yeah. talk to somebody uh, for whatever. <laughs> so, and, and it's actually the website allows you to give gives away the password, and you can just go into it when I'm running it. Anyway, we zoom out. The tide appears to come in. Is the sound working okay for you? <laughs> It has a quite graphic novel feel in terms of aesthetic. But this is just purely using 
course, this whole piece really just uses your head and shoulder shot. So every shot is, is, is every piece is arranged just so it's your head and shoulder. So anyone can come in on the webcam view, they don't need any other software or hardware other than their laptop or desktop computer. And, in, and, you're, and you're working just with this one screen, of course, in the situation. But of course, the world is flooding. People are escaping. Jeff Bezos is off in his blue origin. <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't narrate it all, really. We are. <laughs> I can't help it. So yeah, he, so he, so Jeff Bezos is is off. Is off. There's there's a whole scandal here in the UK with um, dumping raw sewage into our waterways at the moment. Um, so hence, don't drink the water here, whatever you're doing. And you, at the same time, you are becoming your, your uh, power of, of, of um, social media. You're breaking out on breaking news on a kind of local um, DIY news channel. You are now the presenters of your own your own news, your own tragedy. I describe it as a tragic comedy. I guess that's that's a good way. To and there's a there's there's five G masts are being set on fire. This was a familiar sight during the lockdown. People people had assumed that five G was the root was at the root of the uh, COVID outbreak. <laughs> Hence the sort of the sort of suggestion of Steve's kind of uh, intervention in, in the project, playing on that sort of theme of uh, conspiracy. And, uh, and so there you are, in with, uh, reading the news brilliantly there. So yeah, the kind of six news channel is a, is a kind of very improvised TV news channel. And then you are you're zooming out again. So it plays on this kind of this little scene, plays into a kind of zooming, zooming, zooming. And you are now watching the news. We'll zoom out again in a moment. I apologise for the speed. It does work. I promise you, it works much faster <laughs> normally than I normally run this. Just in the image itself, the actors it through the image. But yeah, you are. You see, your images are now silhouetted out. That's something you can do with this. You can silhouette images out. I flipped them. They're not completely they're mirrored. And you look like you are the back of the back of the person watching the TV news, and you are also the TV news presenters, and you are also in the feature in in the news story, in, in that's being featured in the flood. So you're kind of three you have three different roles in all of this, I guess. And then it turns on you, it turns back on the view onto yourselves, on the sofa. So some of these shots are a bit reminiscent of some of my, my earlier video installations, but yeah. So you then you then appear with with some augmented legs um, on the sofa, and um, again you can play with this particular mm -hmm. any way you chose to. Um. <laughs> it slightly overlaps. The videos do do they're slightly they're not always because of the limitation of the amount of space you have around you. But they do sometimes. That slightly little. You can you can put your head on somebody else's shoulder, as it were. You know, you can, you can play, do those sorts of things. Um, this was quite fun. From there, you then discover there is a slight suggestion of what's going on here. Um, so it's a sort of subtle, slightly subtle. There are some car keys and a map on the table. You're in the kitchen of your rather rather depressed situation of your living environment is not not great but there is a kind of kind of petrol and you are you appear to be distilling something in the background as well so there's sort of little clues to maybe what you're trying to do you know you're trying to it's survival basically it's about survival really so um we can zoom in it's just it's hints at a narrative maybe it overly hints sometimes but it tends to hint at a narrative that you you have to fill in the gap and, and you know you're when it's just the two of you you could be having you could be having a conversation having a bit of a laugh probably with all of it so
So it does go on a little bit. Yeah, you then turn up in... I have to reposition this. There you are, you're sort of driving out into the hills here now. Michelle's still there. Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm sorry, Michelle. I'm having to move you into the driving position. There. You are driving out in the countryside somewhere. Well, uh, up to the hills. Let's say you're driving out. You're driving. You're driving up to the hills to escape the flood water. There's a mixture of this. This. These are shots that I have. These are montaged together, uh, uh, collaged. Bits of video that people have shot and I've shot in the past. I've reused. Found an old car. I made I actually found this image of this car. I made it rusty. The rusty old Mini Metro. For those of you who remember that car. <laughs> and we're out on the we're out up on the uh, on the Peak District somewhere at the moment. Up in somewhere driving, trying to get away from the the, the rising water levels. And just by bringing in filters, make it look like nighttime. We can bring the head. We can turn the lights up on the headlights. We can treat, we can give it that bit of bit of sort of drama. It's a bit of light inside. Um, that sort of just just by using everything is done in a sense with with bits of Photoshop images and and bits that are cut out, video that's put in, brought in in backgrounds. Um, it does, it's just using a combination of different bits of pieces of software. And as I say, I haven't touched anything here. I, I'm literally just, this is running automatically. The whole, the whole sequence is all on, on one script, all time to run. Now that could, that, equally, you could do something very similar with the experience of the people. People running this 24 seven in a booth. You could run the, the piece that, that, that your commission artists designs and create could run and run and run and, just continue to run and and allow up to eight potential parties yeah so you see it's getting the, getting the road's getting a bit bumpy getting some hot holes Almost drawing to a. It's getting getting close towards the conclusion, the concluding scenes here, but um, I won't preempt it. We got is it, is it Hannah or is it Kim in in the in there at the moment? Who we got in? Yes, Kim. Kim, hi, Kim, okay. <laughs> before, when I had somebody else, actually did have two people in here once before. It did look like somebody was in the back seat. So I don't know whether whether Anna is still still available. But it, did, it did look like yeah. somebody can suddenly appear in the back seat of the car, which is quite funny. Hey, I see. Look. <laughs> yes, Anna is cute. Suddenly oh, no, popped up in the back seat. That was completely. Un I had no idea that would happen, but somebody else did that one. I didn't notice when they were doing it. Anyway, inevitably, we're, we're on the beach. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> there you are, you see. And I'm just appearing behind you. Yes, keep us. <laughs> so even the screen is done with like the wing, so, so you have to be very careful. You position you behind the mirror. There's a slight sort of filter on the on the windscreen to sort of make it look like you are in the car. Playing around with all these little little subtle differences. Um, it, you could even when it was driving, I didn't do it in the end, but like, you could have even made a filter that that creates that kind of driving effect of, of a kind of light changing. Um, so a lot of and a lot of TV and green screen studio they use a lot of this in cinema. As well, that the basic ideas of, of, of layers and filters in, in putting videos together and, and putting those shots together, green screen shots. You could equally here it's a shot, a video shot that is not even involving any people. This is just another video shot to help the narrative. 
So it could be there could be other bits of video just to help the narrative move along. If you want to suggest a kind of narrative or story, you could have if, if you could use images, uh, bits of video that that are recorded. Um, the car, you could have a long shot, distant shot of the car driving or something. Or um, we don't we don't see them pitch the tent here, but we uh, we, we see a tent. They obviously they're broken down, old deaths, and they're broken down. So they're, they're going to have to try and go by foot basically here on. And um, some little flies and ridges appear as always. But as the yeah, it's night time is in. Lights go on. You know, and then, then they're appearing just by using silhouettes uh, positioned behind a tr like translucent layer. You appear as shadows inside the tent. Mm -hmm. So that's, really it's about thinking through what, get, understanding what you could possibly do with all these layers of video. And, and, and So understanding some of the technology. Think about the idea of the narrative and the drama. And that might be you know, a conversation, a discussion that, that that needs to be had with those with those um, participating uh, artists involved in the project. Because these are flies now. Into the tent. I'm trying to spot the flies away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just as just as you thought it couldn't get any work. We're almost there, I think. Is it at the end of the end actually ends in that hallucinatory state you started in? It just suggests it, I just it really suggests that you've really but not quite there yet. I mean it's a bit unclear. Or not the final scene for that. So yeah, so, so we can then take that filter away, we can take, take the tent away. We're left just with the with the moors burning. Um and then we can fade to black and fade up. We go to our next scene, where we discover discover ourselves back at, back in the um, back home. You've made just you made it back home on foot, perhaps, but you're not really not very well. You have to dry out your clothes. Um, it's just just hasn't really progressed. Really, um, you haven't really got any further with this. And that's when you enter into this hallucinatory state. Um, which is maybe you've ingested something from the water or something on the moors. I don't know, but but you've got to a point where. Anyway, these are sorts of sorts of narratives you might want to explore. There's even dead fish on the floor. Now I'm so zooming in. I'm actually switching, putting, putting a filter on just so that it's just so it highlights those bedside table lamps. So you can actually go, you can actually zoom in. You can fade, fade in that filter, so it looks like your the light source is just the bedside table lamps here. And I think we're then going to fade out in just a moment. There we go. It did work. Almost all of it work. Um, there we are. We're back in the room. <laughs> I'll switch off my little filter because Steve and I, look, I suddenly turns my glasses into very, very thick rimmed glasses. Which I, I quite like, but but I better not better not have that. There we go. I'll do them like that instead. There we go. Back to that that filter instead, which is our regular video filter. So that's that slide. Let me just see if there's a little uh there, yeah, and then there was just some just some images actually, just from that piece that we'll just whiz through. And I think that takes us to the end. Those are some of my my students and family um playing around with this, um, doing different things, um, exploring it. Um, there's a lot more on the website. 
you can actually go to it when I, when I run it, you can do it all from the website, basically. You don't need anything other than the website to access it. There's two of my students. One of the students on the left there um, used her torch on her mobile phone to light up her face, which was quite fun, um, to sort of look like this sort of menacing, sort of mysterious car journey they were taking. And then, of course, they play in the play with the shadows and the tents, which you did. And then they're playing around with being rather ill and so on, that sort of thing. So I'm looking at my other screen, which I look at her. I realise I look, look, I look like I'm looking at the floor, but I'm not I'm looking at that. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if I was gonna I was gonna go on actually, but I don't know whether whether we should take a short break. I think I'm not, maybe I've I've overly anticipated the timing here. What do you think? We were going to finish at twelve thirty, and I'm, and I'm concerned we're not going to have, have enough time for conversation. Perhaps I could quickly just go through some of these these slides here. I think there's. Have I got, yes, I've mentioned that already. I don't know whether there's too much to mention that I haven't already mentioned um, in these particular slides. So that was just the difference between the two. Um, but what, and then just talking about some, again, filters with smoke um, that we can play around with, um, pulling people out of holes in the ground, that's something else that they explored in the, in the previous project. Um, and of course, we mentioned the tables with, with um, Creation Theatre and the work they were doing. And that was an audience member they brought in there uh, on a special feed. And they played and performed with, with that particular member of the audience. Um, and then uh, the, the Pigeon Theatre's um, piece using, in that particular scene, using um, just a, a cross fade with the two performers. So that so actually the faces start to start to merge and cross fade and they could perform with that. The actors in this piece um, for um, uh, a Gutter Snipe Theatre, they worked with, pre-recorded material so they had this kind of boy band thing on the this is kind of a it was a kind of a, a, a kind of pop idol uh competition that all goes wrong all goes sort of rather sinister and anyway they're performing with themselves here against themselves the boy band on the left and they're they're pre-recorded um that they're actually then performing performing with um red ladder theater taking a much more cinematic approach or television approach to this by trying to compose shots that, that you might you might want to feature in, in a kind of narrative television kind of drama and using that mirror um idea is quite interesting um between the dialogue between the two between the two the spatial relationship between the two the two performers and then uh with um that piece which we showed earlier on the video clip that was that was a live rostrum camera painting. So the illustrator is painting out blue, um, looking at a screen and painting painting blue on a white piece of paper, uh, or, or or the other way around. I can't remember, <laughs> but revealing the video underneath, um, and then live creating a live set according to what's being talked about, um, using silhouettes to conceal the identity of the murderer in this murder mystery story, where the audience have to solve the, solve the mystery. So yeah, I just thought I'd just throw in some slides because these these images of green screen booths, just to sort of get you thinking about what that might be. And, and quite, quite often they're used green screens in, in public spaces and they, they require a green screen, a camera, lights and backdrops. Let me just go a bit more full screen on that one. Maybe that's a bit more helpful to see. Um, yeah, so they, they are green screen spaces that people have set up. And some more. That's actually that one. The bottom is actually got a, a treadmill. You know, that's like like someone walking or something on there, or whatever movement you might want to sort of include or have to play around with. Um, and there, there are some examples of sort of booths. That's like a little photo. The one on the right is like a little photo booth type type thing. Um, one you could just walk into. So it could be all sorts of different things. Just I'm just I'm not I, I'm simply just provide just giving you some some sort of suggest thoughts and to think about. But that's this, how, is, this is super useful, Paul. It's oh good. super useful. Great. Well, that is actually images from from the um, shopping centre in Hong Kong, I believe. I think that's where the location is. So that might even be something that something like that could be set up. But you might want to think about internet, power, lighting, all those sorts of issues need, need to be resolved as well. And, and what what the best does, what best situation is to set that up. I mean, as I say, I've, I've got a background in installation, so I'm familiar, fairly familiar with some of the, I'm sure you are as well, with the kinds of stumbling blocks and the sort, sort of practical problems of, of doing some of these things. Lighting is often an issue. 
Um, but well, there may be ways of getting video out onto bigger screens as well around the building, around the space. That's another problem. You can filter one of the things. And that's one of the things I wanted to show you. So that's what we're doing today, I mentioned. But what this basically does is um, the thing about the vMix and the video online, it now uses a protocol called called network dis network display interface network no network distribution interface ndi which means you can take out video feed to, to actual physical monitors um not only online but you can take it directly fr from a pc or from a whatever computer you're using you, you can take it out through network cables through a net through a network hub and just patch it through to screens anywhere you want it in a space so on a thing it could be in a theater so I think, oh yeah, so we're going to go to discussion one in a minute, but um, I was going to show you, I'd like to go, yes, Let, let's, I wonder whether we could, whether we should do that now. So yeah, you can go to video to different screens. Um, one of the things I might have a chance to show you that one, I might want to show you some other things I just literally just played around with. Oh, I've got, for some reason, I think I have, let me just show you this particular shot here. I just want to take you back to Glasgow for a minute, to a to a famous Glasgow location. Here we are. This is just playing with, uh, I think that's Jane in there. I think um, I've got I've got Jane in that picture. But um, that's just playing out with some more effects for you, just to see some things you could do. So that's showing you that in, in you can also make things quite blurred. You can blur things. You can layer. You can layer things behind objects. We can, we can, we can tra make things slightly translucent. They're kind of talking tombstone. Um, we are in the ne the ne necropolis in Glasgow, up in the cemetery on the on the big cemetery on the hill there, um, and um, famous locations. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to show you some examples of what you can do. Um, so we've got some other scenes here. I've got scenes you could do in a theatre space. Obviously, we could cut out, make cutouts and put people on the ground. We can do back projections into spaces. These aren't set up. Maybe I'll set these up and come back to them later on. But ultimately, this point, the point, the point in the programme next is that we we're going to go to some discussion. <laughs> so maybe I don't, there's some there's some contributions, I'm sure. Anything I've said, you might want to come back out, uh, come back and talk about. We, we could have a short break now and then come back to this. How do we feel? I've, we've talked slightly longer than I thought we were going to. I think, I mean, I'm not sure where people are at with um, our partners in Hong Kong um, and with Sagar um, in Nepal, just in terms of timings, because I know it's quite it's getting a bit later in sure. Hong Kong. I don't know if any, if any of you guys need to go, and so which, in which case we might be best to just have either have a quick discussion if you want to feed into discussion or you guys can go um we're recording this whole session so um we can we can share that um with I mean, you if you need to go in the original plan we were intending on having a short discussion and then then having a break but i was wondering about it so we we could stick to that have, to have, have a short discussion now and have a quick and then we have a break and we'll we have, have a bit more discussion and i think we'll have a bit of commentary and feedback Steve, Jane, and other colleagues as well, I think. So let's, let's go for it. Um, Sagar, you've got your hand up. Were you going to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for these amazing demos. I, because I work a lot in digital accessibility, making things accessible to people with disabilities, and especially to people with visual impairments, have you ever worked with uh, artists with who are fully blind? And uh, uh, like again, I understand that the artists don't have to do any kind of you know uh, technology thing. I think there is a operator or an editor uh, or technologist li like you because we we didn't have to do anything today. Like, but have you had that experience of working with blind people and? Is this technology a bit accessible to them, or what? What was their experiences on this one? Mm -hmm. Because it's it's very amazing for the visual audiences like us. But uh, what about blind people? Have you worked with them? I think the answer is I, I ha no, I haven't. Um, and I think it would. It's really uh, that 
I don't know, is is that audio description? Is that a conversation around audio description? Um, is, is what to what? I, I haven't, is the short answer. And I think it'd be really interesting to hear from others as well, who, who may have of how they how they how they could see this technology perhaps having how we would incorporate that that access and availability within within what you've looked at today. Ooh. That's a bit a good question. I don't I don't have the answer to it. I have the um but but I would I I would be I'd really be interested to take the steer on that on on what the best way to do this is or what 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 has been done in the past and how mm. you might want to incorporate that in this this today. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just to give you a little bit of context for a uh, physical space, um, if there is a blind artist, we would just give them a space orientation. This is this thing is here, and then uh, they would move around, feel the things, and then they would position in the scene, right? So, uh, in the in the scene that we set up in Vmix or or a virtual world. I think that's sort of possible by giving an audio description in advance or, you know, we haven't tried that, but uh, because I work a lot with blind people and this technology. So while you were showing the demos, I was running in my hand. If, if for example, instead of missile and uh, Jane, if there were blind participants, um, what should we do? Like we would give them um, a bit of a description. There is a chair in the middle or you are in the, you know, like, uh, because they sort of have to position themselves in the, the space also, right? So audio description might work, but this is just an, um, you know, question to, not a question, just a comment for everyone to think around. Uh, because we have, in Unwrap, we are possibly going to have one or more blind participants also. So we have to think this through for the access also. Thank you very much. That's just my thought. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there wouldn't, there's no reason why not, you know, I mean, in a, in effect, you are in control of of the experience. running this program. You're somehow in control of how you deliver it. Mm. So it could be that you could you could bring in your audience mm. um, and your performer. Um, well, you bring in your sonography, your sets, perhaps, but at the same time, you bring in your audio description of that set, perhaps before you before the performers a, a, appear. Or, or because uh, you were, obviously what you're wanting to try and avoid is to have too much audio at the same time. You know, it's difficult to overlay mm -hmm. audio to have overlaid audio. Um, if, you, if you've got dialogue taking place, you it's difficult then to have have audio description at the same time. So it's about it's about timing, and it's about what I guess how much how much audio description is necessary, and perhaps. Audio description would be work, would work better if it wasn't actually any visuals, and then the visuals um, became available. Maybe there's a there's a kind of description of what is what is going on. Um, uh, 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 we can use more captions as well. Not not that that's necessary in, in for the use of of blind um, participants and audiences, but perhaps it's giving uh, it's giving other kinds of audio description as yeah. well. <clears throat> but but I think what you were saying that uh, um, uh, if you if you do pre audio description, so so the uh, the piece um, that, um, that 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 Michelle Shell and Kim Kim were in, if you if you get, gave all the descriptions prior to it, uh, and then just give cues, oh, and now we're going into the car, etc. But but you 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 worked with the the part, uh, blind participants to really explain or. All the different environments, so that they are then able, um, you know, and and say you're in a depressing room, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so that that if they they start conversations and so on, that you know they understand the context and the 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 environment that that they're in, the locations they're in. So I would have thought, you know, that's one way uh, of making it work without lots and lots of different um, uh, audio description, but just cues to uh, to indicate the change of location and so on. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think as we'll a try it. <laughs> Mona, please go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, like a key part of as Mary mentioned earlier, a key part of when bot create work um is that we embed accessibility creatively throughout throughout any piece of work that we that we make. Um so the audio like audio description would definitely be a large part of 
any any telepresent um, work that we would do because it is so visually led. Mm. Um, the audio description would really need to be a massive part of it, but we would embed that creatively in the process, in the process either in the process of making the work if it was going to be pre-recorded, um, or it would be embedded in the work, like it would be done live if it's being facilitated with with a group. Um, probably would be would be what would be the approach that I would take, but we definitely make sure that it's the way in which the space is described fits the world of the space as well. Um, it's definitely a thing that we consider when when we're making work is that, you know, if you've got this depressing space like in Kim Hill or High Water, um, you've got this really kind of, yeah, depressing, tragicomic space, then you wouldn't want to have like really bland, serious audio description. You'd want to maybe have audio description that has a bit of that has a bit of bite that's delivered in a way that that works with that um tragicomic genre mm. uh, and, and making sure that works so I think that would be a consideration with yeah with delivering any audio description I um, within telepresent um spaces but also considering that in in different languages because the the projects that we're going to be using telepresence with, are going to be spaces where there will be people who use spoken English, um, but also people who, who speak multiple different languages. So there will need to be translation and stuff in there um, also, which again is just is just really interesting. And that's just thinking about the audio description side of it. That's not even thinking about um, the experience for, for deaf participants as well, um, which would need captions in multiple languages um, and also perhaps sign language in multiple languages. And there's, there's there a whole load of stuff to consider in terms of embedding accessibility creatively, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's really exciting. Absolutely. And I think you're right. Absolutely. I, I think in a way, I mean, I, <laughs> my probably my descriptions were a little bit, little bit of audio description anyway, it's slightly. I mean, obviously it needed to have, it could be much more, in it, much more in keeping and creative the way it's the way it's expressed in terms of the environment and and, to, and it is part of it and there there could be other sounds we're playing with um with within that but i think also yeah somehow i felt like i was giving you a little bit of an audio description perhaps just with my kind of um uh description of what what these scenes potentially are about or what, what what's going on in them um and that that maybe that's an that that's an augmentation that anyone would would want, not just not just someone who's you know. And that's ultimately what what you're aiming at is not just it shouldn't feel like it's this is for the, the 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 blind person's experience and this is for somebody else's experience. This is for everyone's experience. Everyone gets the same experience. Absolutely. There's a yeah. There's a there's an equity there in terms yeah. of even if people don't have this the exact same experience. There's their experience has been considered um and that it's is there is there for everyone and to enhance everybody's um yeah experience of the piece yeah, yeah. i was just aware that jane looked like you were going to say something i just wanted to come back to that if we have time yeah sorry i can't find the thing to raise my hand on the thing but anyway i'll um i just wondered okay. um about the Sort of, I was thinking about the tape, the piece that was done around the table, where there was something actually physically in the room, and I wondered if that may also be something to think about in terms of just physically having physical objects that, when people are making um, the performances, there's something to interact with which might support that kind of situating people as well, which it doesn't rely on the visual. Yeah, That's a really good point. Absolutely, it could be. I think it's down to all, all down to, and one of the things about that, that just to bear in mind, is that um, with the creation theatre, they, the two participants, um, we had to set up their cameras and to find tables of the same dimensions to make that work. So it's very clever. Very, they had to make sure that the cameras were complete, absolutely, well, virtual studio type precision aligned that they were exactly the same position and the tables were so, so you had the same perspective on the tables so they would both line up 
with with the the table that was in the sonography with the, the digital table as well so there were three things that were being lined up if you're asking people to come in online as participating it's quite you know you could say to people look if you want a full body you'll need to have, have a green screen background uh, or or you know full, full sitting view you'll need a green screen background we can we can try and do some augment we can try and do some um background segmentation there's some work they will have to do but what i'm getting at is there'd be quite a big ask to say could you find a table of a certain size and and position your camera at a certain angle if you want to have a kind of more um open um open access it gets slightly more limited in terms of what you can prearrange with people if you're working with just two performers in advance and you 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 can actually really spend a couple of hours with those performers prepping up um and getting it spot on it can work it can also work very well but i think that i think the situation is in this situation we might not have that luxury of having those few hours with each performer <laughs> i don't know it may be something you want to build in and think about it could be yeah i mean i, I think the the more time you you know we found working with different companies that the more the more time you have to really um set everything up correctly and get get the uh, also get the right lighting lighting and so on so that it's it's consistent uh, across people and, and actually in, in it was disappointing with the, with the taxi um scene that that you saw that actually she her light was kind of much whiter light and we didn't quite we never quite got the the color temperatures yeah correct correct between between them for for various reasons but so some some of those things and also making sure that the that the green screen hasn't got any gaps and uh you know and 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 your lighting is con consistent and 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 all all of this uh and you're relatively well lit becomes becomes quite important if you really you know, trying to get to the very high, high, high production value. So it is worth taking time, but, but where you're being more accessible and, uh, you know, and, and, and enabling uh, people to just kind of join online and so on, you, you won't al always have that, that, you know, the, the ability to do that. So that's just kind of one of those things. Mm -hmm. There's a question from Saga in the yep. chat. Please go ahead, Jane. Um, I don't know. Is Saga still here? Or, uh, did you want to? Yeah, I have written in the chat not to disturb others, but I can read it. So I was just asking if uh, the main compositing software is vMix or you are also using other softwares. Yes, it is. It's mainly for this for the streaming aspect and the kind of bringing bringing all the video together. We are doing it with mm -hmm. Remix, but that in that demo, um, uh, I incorporated another bit of software which is called Resolume, which is a VJing software application that allows you to create your own filters. So people use that to create video if they want to add a little bit of a texture, or they want if they simply if they want to take out all you know the, the color uh, saturation. Or they want to increase certain things. They can use that bit of software as well. And that software, VMix is limited in terms of the kind of visual effects you can do. You can do lots of production effects. It's like a production. It's like any kind of TV production switching um, environment, really. Um, but um, so to do those slightly more video effects, you have to combine other bits of software. Um, but VMix, I mean, OBS is a similar kind of model uh, system. Mm -hmm um open broadcast studio which is a free um free bit of software uh we tend to use this one and, and we have used it it is a per, you know to, it needs to be purchased it's a board so it's a commercial bit of software but it's very very stable it does work I, I, trust me it, outside of zoom it's really really stable i mean i think there's some prep that could be done with zoom here so don't think this is this is uh this is limitation anyway sorry do you want to is there another Question. No, thank you. Uh, yeah, but um, I mean, anything really. It's our. It's we're, it's we're at the limits of our imagination of what we might want to do with this. <laughs> so, so I think you could do lots of lots and lots of stuff with it. Um, it it's uh, yeah. We really, it'd be, it'd be really. I'm not quite sure, Mona, Mari, how how we might want to sort of develop that that 
conversation of that experiments and the sorts of sorts of ideas to, leading towards the um the, the piece in October and maybe one of the first things to think about is, is think about that timeline between now and October and that's one of the purposes of this this workshop today is to think about if we want to get to, I think it's 18th to the 21st of October is is the is the um fest festival in Hong Kong so that's our time that, that's our goal which is really great we've got that goal we've got it's now just 11th of June what is our kind of timeline to get to that point what 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 bits do we, we need to accomplish and, and I think we would hope Paul that we know the artists we're working with because it's a commission yeah we don't know yet who we're going to be working with and that will dictate quite a lot so we're going to be putting out a call out as soon as possible to try and yeah. find out who we're going to be working with because that will determine these elements depending on what the artist wants to do but in our workshops with um, the, the Nepal project, mm -hmm. we we can use that as a way of testing things as well and be more directive on that. So because we, we can come at that from a different a different angle. Right. So I think in June in our workshop, we'll hopefully we'll know we'll know who we've commissioned in Hong Kong, but we'll also have some ideas that we want to workshop with you around what we could be doing. Um, with the um, workshops for Unwrapped. So sort of two different two different angles, I suppose. Um, but accessibility at the heart of it, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling that with the um, the Unwrapped project, um, and Mary and Michelle, like totally feel free to jump in on this as well, and Sagar. Um, but I think we would probably be looking to create these environments, these digital environments and take them to the group for the group to be within them and for them to experience being in that space together, whatever that space may be. Mm -hmm. um, but those spaces may be influenced by some of the stories that they share. Mm -hmm. um, it's just where, it's where my, my brain is going um, with the idea of sort of taking telepresence into the into the workshop spaces. Um, whereas with Spark, the artist that we commission will be solely responsible for creating the visual space, but they may, well, they, they probably will need support um, from, from you and your team, Paul. Um, yeah. I think that will be, I think that would be vital. I um, also had a brief conversation um, with folks at ADHK. Um, I know that Kim and Hannah have had to jump off because they had another call. Um, but we're consider we're thinking it might be really quite important to have a briefing session um for artists who are interested in applying for the commission. Um, and I wondered if part of that briefing session might actually just be uh, similar to that last section that we did there, Paul, where you just kind of like jumped through loads of different examples and things that have been done and the potentials of using silhouettes and, and using using props and, and all those kind of different um, applications and potentials of it just to really give people the sense of what what it is and, and what the what the, those different opportunities could be before then they put in their proposal um for the commission so that just so they've, they've got um they've got access to a bit more information and knowledge about it before we expect them to go and just write a proposal um yep. that would probably be in the next couple of weeks um i don't know how that works timeline wise for you paul mm -hmm. i think that's a really good idea i would very very be delighted to do that um, and to get and to do it in a way that, that, that is really um, get to get a full experience of what it's like to be in this space, so, so they can so, and they, they get the full concept just by doing it. Yeah, um, it, it's a little tricky in terms of timing. I mean, I'm 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 away from the 21st of June until the 5th of July <laughs> at a conference and and a bit a bit a bit a bit of, bit of vacation, but but it, it's. Um, but if we could try and get something in, and that's literally that that does become quite tight in terms of timing. But I'm happy to do something. Even I mean, I, the 2021st is out, but I can do anything up until the uh, where are we today? Anything 
yeah you see it's, a, it's literally about a week <laughs> so anything up until the 20th just over a week i would have if there's anything you could try and if you've got people already otherwise it could be early early july okay i, I don't mind cool leave that with me i'm checking in with um adhk tomorrow morning um so we can kind of we can work out what what that might look like and whether it might be it whether it may be that another one of your colleagues are able to come and do that delivery session or 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 what what shape that could take um just because the timeline for this project is quite tight but i definitely want to make sure that prospective artists who are wanting to apply for the commission just have as much information as they can have yeah yeah okay okay keep me updated uh, maybe there's maybe there's a way around it um it, possibility we could we could we could transfer it to another machine and maybe tom might be able to run it and i'd have to have a look how, how we could do that tom and i could talk about that how, how i can't promise but that might be possible cool i will keep you up to date okay Okay, and I think you're absolutely right about a really interesting approach to take. If you take a much more, if you're taking a more kind of like, um, uh, um, you know, with with the project with Hong Kong, seems to have a much more um, defined outcome in a sense or direction, whereas the project with Nepal seems to be more, it has more speculative uh, workshop type activities around with it within it. So there's that sort of and one one working it with with one informing the other seems like a very good way to go, particularly with the, the kind of project in Nepal informing the, the, the workshops, informing that development for that yeah. project and yeah. understanding kind of opportunities and, 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 and uh, shortcomings that you might want to then 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 maybe to be useful to 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 create the work in Hong Kong as well. Yeah. That sounds sounds very good. Um I, I know, of course dates is always a difficult one. We we are we we're working up until October obviously and and really it would be very helpful if you could come back to us with a kind of with a number of dates <laughs> other than that other than that that sort of briefing session that might be one but we would i would think that we'd need to have with with each residency we'd like to have about 10 10 sessions and they may be two they may be up to three hours long each and they would be with with the with the workshops with the participants with the artists um and we'd set things up it could be small groups. It could be just three, three or four people might be in, engaging in it. And there might be you, you might be in a position where you're just observing or giving direction. You know, you could be you might be your performers are actually in there doing stuff and you're watching. Um, that that's how it's kind of worked previously with the kind of workshop sort, sort of approaches that they that they're really in there working and you're you're kind of in a sense uh, uh, being able to come, come contribute, observe, and and see what's see what they're doing. But they they might need equipment as well. That's the other thing. So they yeah. might, they might, they might, they might need. You know, they might not feel that the background segmentation is appropriate or useful or good enough for that for what they want to do. And they literally want to have a green screen backdrop. And so, so we'd need to make sure they can get all that, all that, get all that kit sent to them in advance, and they can set it up in their studio or home. And if if they are in a situation um, that they need um support and and uh, assistance in setting that up we need to factor that in as well and yeah so, absolutely so there's a risk assessment on any kind of potential trip hazards we might be bringing into people's houses or studios with that too so we need to just i'm sure you're familiar with all those things but we just need to make sure we 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 we, we kind of just adhere to any um any risks that we might might be might be setting up yeah absolutely so I'm just making some notes as well. Course. Yeah, of course. Um, the, the the intention for today, for the rest, rest of the day, I mean, we just quickly just go through these slides very quickly. And I just want to see whether we were going to finish around, finish up, finish up about 12.30. So it, it's, um, and I think we're going to have, we're going to have a break after this conversation. And then literally, I was going to ask Trish to do a cup, to do a short little, Little bit about disability arts online. Trisha, are you still there? I'm so sorry. I mean, we, we've been bringing up and talking. I am, yeah. And I'm listening in. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that you've done some fantastic work with your new digital platform for disability arts online, which is just is has it I don't know if it's actually has it officially launched yet or is it 
It has, yes. So I'll give you a very brief tour. I don't need 10 minutes. I, I'll do it very quickly. <laughs> Should we do it now? Should we go to it now? We'll um, it. Is that okay with everybody? That's what everyone else, yeah, I don't mind. And then we can, I don't know if you want to take, take a quick quick break before that. Does anyone need to take a quick break before we go to Trish? I feel like a break just now might be really good. All right, let's do that. Is that okay, Trish? Do you mind if we just have a five-minute break? That's absolutely fine. Right. I, yes, I will try and think what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry it's very this is this is a scoping opportunity so it's really for you to just sort of first to have a conversation steve uh, yeah, a little break would be great, great. and steve, i appreciate you. it's in singapore you're, you're right for timing and our hong kong partners i think they may, they may have already gone but not the meeting oh my gosh steve i was forgetting you're in singapore right now as well no no hey hey it's 6 45 p.m it's not not late at all it's absolutely okay. fine no, I, i'm great uh, um paul just um uh, in my little spot, I, I won't do ten, 10 minutes, but uh, I just sent you um, a PowerPoint with a, vi a video in. I just emailed it because I thought you you might want. I, I just wanted to show two minutes of virtually no exit. Um, and I, I just okay. emailed it okay. because I thought you might need to do it from there rather than me share screen. I... It, 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 it might be easier if you share, if you do it, you'll share, share screen it. yourself. Sure. Uh, easy. Uh, it's okay. Um, We'll do that. Yep. We'll do that way. Sure. Fantastic. No Thank problem. you. And I'll just right. set you up on here and bring you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll only be brief in my bit. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, let's come back at um at uh maybe ten to. So give us eight, eight minutes. Ten ten to twelve, we'll come back and then we'll just probably have another half an hour or forty minutes and we'll call it a day there. Hi Trish, you're back. Excellent. Okay. Hello. Do you want me to put the URL in the chat, or have you got it up already? No, I I can. Please put it in the chat. But I'm going to bring it up on screen. I'm going to bring it up on screen. Um, what I'm going to do? Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to put it up on screen. So let me just uh, actually. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do it this way. I'll um probably put it on um. Uh, let me find, find out where it is. Ah, that's always useful. Okay, where is it? Um, Okay, so we are. I'm currently here with Steve. I'm now going to, going to go back to. I'm going to. There we are. Another, another, another Kelvin Grove moment here for you. Just to, just to sort of uh, light <laughs> up. Here we are. We're Trish and I are on a park bench in the Kelvin Grove Park, Glasgow today. <laughs> um, using my augmented. Where am I? Oh, wrong. There we go. There we go. Used to put myself there. That's it. I feel better. I feel better. There we go. Somehow a bit like that. Yeah, that felt better as well. So I'll <laughs> go to full screen for you in a minute, Trish. But this is your website, and I can click around in your website for you, um, and uh, and show show you show everybody. You know, you know, you can give me a minute. So let me hand over to you now, Trish. Uh, Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll just say a few words. Um, this website has been a year in the making. Um, Disability Arts Online as an organisation is 20 years old this year and uh, was founded by our founder editor, Colin Hambrook, who is also working on this project, but he's on annual leave this week, so hence him not being here. Uh, having a much needed rest after this huge effort to get the website done. So um, we've had an update to our brand. Um, those of you who are familiar with us, um, we, we used to have a black and white logo. We've added a splash of colour to it and, and changed things up a bit. And one of the most wonderful things about our brand that I just really, really love is that Colin's um, artwork is actually encoded into the, to the wallpaper backgrounds that you see across the website. So it's really sort of a... Um, a properly honours him in its 20th year, which is lovely. And uh, so we have a staff team of eight, um, but the probably full-time equivalent of about six. 
Um, and we also work with over 100 creatives and disabled writers throughout the each year um, with paid opportunities. So this is our homepage. Do you want to give it a little scroll down so you can get oh, a flavour yeah. of what's in there? Um, we've got sort of various different blocks and sections which uh, sort of highlight new stuff in the magazine. Um, and then our blogging area is now called the community. Um you can keep scrolling. We've got our listings, which are well used by the sector. And new to us this this in this iteration of the website is a resources section, which is um, our own resources, but also resources produced by uh, other organisations. It's all resources that relate to, um, uh, to access or working as a disabled creative in the arts and cultural sector. Um, one of the major things that we've done, if you want to scroll back right back back up to the top um, and just search Birds of Paradise in the search box in the middle of the screen. Um, I can do one that. One of the... Can you do that? Yes. I put in, this is a problem. My, ah, my, right, okay. My, well, my, okay, so in your own time, <laughs> have a go with this because um, we have a whole new sort of engine that's running the site so our search indexing is much much more sophisticated than it used to be so you should be able to find stuff more easily uh, and also we did a whole we have over three thousand pages on the website and we had to re-tag them all and 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 rework out our taxonomy so there's a, an awful lot of work behind the scenes to get to this point as well um oh there you go yeah so you can see um it's really starting to pull through relevant content, which is great. And we've got the Locked World news item there from, I think it was uh, February, we, we published that. Um, the other thing that's really exciting about this new site is it's actually a section we haven't launched yet, um, but we will be having an events platform in the one, What's On section, um, and that will enable people to watch our events um and but critically they'll be able to switch the access options on and off we've had various feedback around conflict of access with sign language interpretation being um a, a huge distraction for certain members of our community so we wanted to offer people the option of really um customizing the events experience for for, for themselves uh, so we are currently working on building that right now um, we've got a much more sophisticated listing system, which is still bedding in, but it's it's really well used by people. Um, and uh, I think that's probably about it. I'll, just to give you a sense of the scale, our website had half a million hits in the last year. So we're getting really high traffic for, for an arts and cultural website, I think. Um, and particularly for one that's, with uh, a, a community within a community uh, within the arts community um so just within this within this project i just wanted to reiterate um some kind of our role within it as well um to say that like in the lead up to this um symposium at the end we're providing a critical friend role so you can use us this is particularly aimed at, at birds of paradise um you can you can sort of use us how you want to and we're interested in the process and the product um our audience is very into the process of things so um i think the sort of how things are achieved the discussion around that would would be really useful to to highlight in in articles um but also sort of looking critically at the, the 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 work that is created and the potential for that to go further in the future um and so yeah just just really want to be writing and talking about the potential for this platform as a as a creative tool for the future um and really understanding it as a as a piece of experimentation um and then yeah we look forward to working on the symposium as well uh, I, I think that's probably enough, unless anyone's got any questions about the site or uh, our role more generally within this project or anything. Go ahead, Mona. 
That looks really cool. Um, I wondered when, do you have a sort of time frame as to when the events platform is, is going to be operable or not sure yet? Uh, there is a meeting today so <laughs> um, with the web developers. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping within the next six months. Cool. The other thing that we're actually developing this year, which I didn't mention, is an online gallery as well. And we're employing a disabled curator to program that that space. But we, we again, we're, we're right at the beginning of the discovery phase for that. Fantastic. I should have mentioned, I mean, obviously, one of the things that we, you, your role in this project as, 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 as a bringing you on board as consultants um, is, and you mentioned it at the end, Trish, that, that your role is also is to, to convene our kind of closing, closing symposium um, that we have, we have planned for to happen in, in November. It could be November, November, December, certainly the end of this year. And that would also um align with our other research partners who are who are not here today re represented by Richard Reza and um Disability History Month um which is also they have their festival event that month is is from sort of mid mid November to mid December so that would tie in quite nicely with some of the things that that they're doing and we're really really hoping to get to get, to get the project exposed and and our to live our sort of outcomes are presented in that in that context and platform as well so that's hopefully where we're where we're ending where we're arriving at sort of come come november december time um a lot of, a lot of the outputs that we, we've created can be sort of presented in that context and for that kind of dissemination and further discussion so this website is going to be really helpful in in kind of like bringing this all together and and um announcing these things and and i think perhaps mourner's question perhaps was that question of alluding to perhaps maybe how how can how 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 could we kind of work together to to get sort of to because you have yeah you know, the disability arts online have a, a huge audience and be really good to try and get get a, an opportunity to let that audience know about what what the project is doing and what what we're what we're what we're exploring for participation um for just for for, for just extending uh the, the the knowledge of what what we're doing and what um, and how it's being done so yeah so that'd be really good to know maybe that's a pilot maybe it's a pilot for you <laughs> if, if it's not ready by by that time but um i'm yeah. i'm hoping it will be ready and that we'd be hosting it on that platform uh, among others yeah brilliant that's great Okay, so and I should have mentioned that, of course, Richard Comp couldn't be here this this for this of this event, but um, his presentation is also available online now um, for, from our last um, uh, workshop we did with Cryptic Arts back in February, and I can send a link for that video now to everybody. And that includes full BSL um, translation on there as well now. So let me go to um, Steve. Steve, you're going to be. Um, presenting you, you're going to share your screen i think that's the, that, that's probably the best way yeah. forward with this one yeah I, I will do that in, in in a moment i think um i think it was originally asked just to talk a bit a bit about la salle um the arts college university um that i'm, I'm a part of and the sort of facilities we have here and what we do and we're a sort of a specialist arts college so it was we're sort of practice led and the students are here kind of pretty much all day and in performing arts it's conservative to our training sort of you know uh, nine till till seven um and and so and we also have a uh, we have all the arts under one roof here uh, but we also we're very kind of proud of our film school uh, and where a lot of kind of media uh, experimentations happening and it's um it's actually the the david putnam school of film and of anim film and animation and david is actually a, a paid member of staff he so he but he he comes for two separate weeks a year and works intensively with the students doing master classes but also mentoring their films um and it's been the result has been very very good in that a lot of our student films now get nominated for student baftas and student oscars um, so I think kind of five in the last six 
six years films that have been nominated ne haven't won yet anyway um i'm not to show off but just to kind of um talk about about the sort of the um, the ambition of uh of, of los al college of the arts and it's very quite quite a pres prestigious institution and amongst specialist arts institutions is highly ranked um is <clears throat> is kind of that the highest highest rank for performing arts and equal highest ranks in southeast asia for um for art art and design and, and performing arts in in the in the, the sort of qs rankings and so on anyway um what one thing we do in the in the film school is uh we're, we have our own green screen studio but then we also we're very kind of uh flexible about how, about how we use our our main fil film studio in terms of uh, of doing kind of new experiments and ideas and i want to share one that paul and i collaborated uh on um and that's where i will i will share the screen um okay i hope I, it, it all works there will be sound coming in and out of the the clips and i'll talk over um uh, over this the, uh, this project so hopefully oops Is that full screen? Yes, that's great. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So this this was this was a piece uh, we did in our film studio with two uh, different green screen uh, spaces. That's actually my my daughter in, in the in the middle there, who's also also an actor. So uh, this was from five years ago, and it's called Virtually No Exit. So um, there's a there's a play by. John Paul Sartre that, that's set in a living room that is actually hell, uh, but this was a kind of it, it, this is a, a sort of com comic version, uh, but uh, it moved it moves to that kind of hell space uh, toward to, towards the end. Now the the clips from the show that you'll see are all full wraparound images. So let me just uh, where is that? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all full wraparound images. I'll start to play. So uh, wearing a VR headset, you have to turn completely around to see it. My name's Hieronymus Tosh, and I just know we're going to get along. It seems like paradise, but actually it's just an arts college. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's the kind of spectacular campus we have. Uh, it's a live performance for one audience member at a time who wears a virtual reality headset. We get to know them by name, we talk to them and interact with them and engage them in improvisations. The virtual backgrounds keep changing as we take them on a journey that leads to this dark place. Everything is very immersive, close up and intense. It's also in 3D, which you don't <laughs> fully get from, from this video. Jean-Paul Sartre's No Exit. It's about three people who are stuck in this very hot room together forever. And the twist is that they're actually in hell. <laughs> so the system we're using connects two separate spaces with green screen backgrounds. The audience participant is in one space and the two actors are in the other. That's interactivity, isn't it? Everything is so vivid. There are 360 degree cameras in both spaces. Their images are conjoined and composited with virtual back. You will be the third character because you're like hell this other people. And at the end of the show, we break the fourth wall to come into the room of the audience members. Now we hold their hands and this normally terrifies them. So that's <clears throat> That's the piece. Uh, I'll stop sharing. <clears throat> and as I say, sort of, um, it was. It's a Paul and I uh, co-produced it. I sort of came up with the with the concept, but of course, uh, Paul had all the ex the expertise to 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 make it make it all all work uh, technically and, and and aesthetically. It was it was an interesting project because uh, we had forty two performances and an audience of forty two because it's just a single person. So it's a kind of ten minute show that people really sort of appreciate it, but it, you're not getting a lot of people. Uh, actually actually seeing it but there is a video uh, you can see a video of it uh, online in on on Paul's on Paul's website so uh, people have, have watched it second hand as it were so i think that that's all i was going to say i just wanted to share that bit of bit of uh, green green screen work great thank you steve brilliant um
that's that then brings us back to our further further discussion um and um we can go we can move around to our different um participants and present and presenters uh we can go back to back to Mona and Mari back in on the Calvin Grove pavilion um we can move around <laughs> um and so I just I just wanted to thought maybe we've got um the final sort of 20 minutes half an hour uh we can talk about uh anything else that we've discussed there's some things that, that are there actually that, that we wanted to try and discuss we, I think we've covered some of these already um oops sorry here we are um I don't know whether apologies if, if hands going up has not not working as well in in zoom at the moment as it would normally do <laughs> but 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 if if people want to sort of chip in um comment or try and put a hand up, try and uh put a hand up we can have some further discussion for a few minutes is that is that all right i don't know how many people we we, we are now at this stage i think it's really just um we we're, we're down to the final sort of um mari morna and and the rest of the project team here so <laughs> we're, we're a small um uh, intimate group now so i think there's quite a few people who've got their cameras off but i think we've oh, only, is that right i think we've only lost um our partners from Nepal and Hong Kong. Oh, well, that's great. Um, okay. And Janet, um, who's our bot, on our bot board. And do don't you, feel do, your need. Do to you need me to stay, or because uh, my team meeting's happening at the moment? <laughs> no, Trish. If, if, uh, if you don't, if you don't need me, I would. Not a problem at all. I'll step out. I think, yeah, great to feed back to your team on 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 what we're doing today, and, and that sort yeah. of thing is really, really, really helpful. Thank Lovely. You. Thank right. you. Thanks, Brilliant. everyone. Bye. Oh. Thanks, Trish. Yeah, so please do. Any anyone else wants to sort of, and I appreciate if anyone. Uh, I think we're going to go. For, have, maybe we'll give it another twenty minutes, half an hour, if that's possible. So we'll see. So much information and and, and useful stuff to look at. Um, so these were the sorts of things we thought we might might be talking about today or we want to try and resolve which is just to have a little conversation around what sort of resources we might be looking at and bop might be needing um the install tutorial day uh so a, a particular one of the activities of the project is that that tom and i would come up to glasgow and do a kind of install with the tech a kind of te technical day um uh, and we need to arrange when that might happen and then to look at when the, the sort of residency dates might might be occurring up until the sort of 18th and 20th of, of October. Now, I realise that we've talked about some of these things already, and maybe the conversation we had, Mona, about the briefing session, I think this is potentially something different to the install tutorial. Um, yes. But, yeah. but, but I think the install tutorial is really a day when we would, when Tom and I could come up to Glasgow with the equipment, with your, with your equipment, we're going to leave with you. Um, to continue to use, but we'd like to spend a day, maybe two, uh, if you have time, if, if we've all got time, um, to talk to you about about the sorts of things that could be used, and maybe to do some demonstrations of it, some tutorials. There's a lot online that can help you, but 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 to be there in person um, at Bob might be might be a good way to go. I'm not. I like to see what you think about that, but. But I'm more than happy for us to, us to come up and do that, um, and we need to just decide on what sort of resources you might 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 want to want to have. Um, yes, and I think I mentioned. <laughs> do you want to? What's your thoughts initially? I mean, I'm thinking about this. Um, yeah, the install tutorial day in Glasgow. I feel like that. Yeah, that would be really great. I think there will, there may need to be a bit of training with, because we were thinking about bringing in some um, like deaf, disabled or neurodivergent filmmakers um, to kind of, to participate in that, that day or those days, or at least maybe parts of them. Um, but I think it would be really useful depending on who the artist is that we commission 
um, for the Spark Festival, it may be really useful to have them there as well. Um, so that would be an online mm. moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I don't know if there's a kind of there's a maybe a hybrid thing. These yeah, there. absolutely, absolutely. We can we can do that. We can we can run it. We can run it in a way. We can run that day in a day in a way that, that we also have online participation. And people can be online looking at stuff and 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 taking part. It doesn't have. And in actual fact, I mean, there's no reason why we for to get this project run running more than happy for us to run to run sessions remotely as well so you literally don't don't you're not actually having to get people into a room physically a, a bot but everything could be done completely online mm -hmm. and i can i can do i can run sessions in advance um you know we could um we, it doesn't we, we we don't have to get the kit initially immediately to you and installed that doesn't it that wouldn't stop us working with you in advance already using the systems we have online um and working that way so you don't have to you don't have to sort of work uh, uh we don't have to get this this up and running immediately we would we want to work towards it and do it as soon as we can but it's not 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 essential mm -hmm. um so i think yeah i mean the idea is that we we, we we can um start working with you already online as soon as you've got your people set up and ready to go we can do things and even with your you know, uh, they may be sort of digital uh, the, the designers, artists. You want to work with also with the project in Nepal, who wanted to want to start working on dig on on on, on um, digital sonography work. Or I'm also happy to try and put together some mock-ups and scenes for you as well, and work, I can work on those, and I can get other other illustrators and designers involved. So it's up to you. In, in the, the the preparation for the Nepal workshops can can start at, ahead of time, can't it, Morna? And I think us identifying what we want to output, but who, also who we want to skill up going forward, is, is kind of is kind of key there. Um, I was just jumping back and thinking about the Spark Commission, and because you know timeframes are so tight, and I think we need to be able to really clearly communicate that framework for that commission as you as, as you've started to do more now but and i think letting artists know about what what the parameters are but maybe in a way keeping it fairly simplistic i'm just thinking about the time frames of getting somebody getting somebody involved i feel like they need to know as you as you were saying they need to know some of the potential before submitting but we really are quite quite tight on that so it's trying to work out the best way of doing that really yeah i mean i guess i'm thinking about um as well just like the ways like i reckon that you've probably already worked with artists who have a strong digital artwork background like a digital arts practice and have worked with them on how to create these telepresent spaces. And so it's just going, how do we how how do we support that? And how do we make it clear to them what they need to do? Um, I think, I mean, in all honesty, we've worked with a couple of people. And we, we've 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 um I think it's it's a kind of it's a kind of it, it's just that kind of that writing for for telepresence, if you like, the kind of script writing for telepresence, or, or the kind of script writing or for for, for improvisation with telepresence. It's uh, scenography. It's it's a number of different skills. It's a, it's not really a a role that you can describe that already exists. It is a it's it's a it's a creative role. It's it's being able to use. I think the tool the tools are certainly things like um, having. Um, uh, uh, an understanding of um, well, good good digital skills, Adobe skills, of course, are going to be useful um, for them for them to do that. Uh, uh, Photoshop and uh, and other sorts of things, but they shouldn't preclude people from from also having other having other skills that they might want to simply scanning in their 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 their, their material. Um, it's quite hard to sort of to define 
that kind of description of a sort of person that would that, that could manage and, and, and could actually um take some creative ownership over that aspect of it it's quite difficult to describe what that what sort of person would be i i think their skills useful skills of course are going to be to some extent um having knowledge of of a of Adobe or Photoshop, um, some 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 experience of using video online and those sorts of things are going to be helpful. But it's more about scripts, about, about writing scripts, storyboarding. How would you? Any? Uh, I'm looking for help here. Who would? Who, who, who could just describe what sort of role that is? Um, it's just so that we can make it clear to yeah. the people who are going to be applying, like what skills would be useful but also for us to think about what they need to have access to like do they does the commissioned artist need to have um, i'm assuming they would need to have access to vmix and how do we make sure that they can have access to vmix um if they're based in hong kong and we're here and even if we have all the setup on a laptop do we need like how do we facilitate that do we get do we need to find a way to get them a temporary license do we get them to send their stuff across and then we input it into how they want it to be? I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of like, yeah, nailing down into the kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. So in, 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 in entirety. It might be that, you know, I mean, it's not, it, it could be that they might not have all the, they might not have all the knowledge and skills to do all the things. So so they might... Yeah, of course. Really ...provide them with, the, you know, we're going to, with with the hardware, with the, with the computer, we're going to provide yourselves. We also provide you with a license for vMix that has two two sort of seats in the license which means you can share that license with another part another another part another another partner as long as you're not using the software at the same time you're all right but they do need to have they do need to run it on it only run on, runs on a pc on a windows machine it does need a good graphics card on the on, on the computer to run it that's 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 the kind of and that's the, that's what we provide you with um if if they're running it in in hong kong um it, it, the software itself can be used for free for for six for for um for a month um as a kind of demo as well and it's it's a full functioning software it's a demo version that they can actually use for for one month <laughs> should they need to do it should they need that kind of sole access to the software so 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 there's there's opportunities there but um there's no reason why that aspect of it couldn't be controlled by it couldn't be operated by somebody at bop at your studio or in Glasgow somewhere, that the computer exists. It doesn't have to sit literally be in Hong Kong or the designer who creates or the, or the, the artist who's working on this narrative piece doesn't have to be, could, could be in Hong Kong, but the computer, the actual vMix might be somewhere else um, for the for the production. They may be able to use it. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of, I'm not really helping much. Am I? It's, it, it's a sort of a number of skills that that they may they may be involved in. I mean, I would be happy to 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 help you with that in a sense, in terms of your uh, uh, you know to, to try. You're going to put a call, obviously you're going to put a call out, but I think in some ways it's got to be a kind of very sort of telepresence producer creator artist to create to create these this this kind of environment this this kind of narrative this kind of dramaturgy um, um and you, people are going to put, put proposals in then you're going to select something i'll be happy to help to to, to, to join you in that, in that kind of panel if you like to help make those decisions easier and, that would be super helpful i mean i think what we've done is we've we've already referenced the telepresence stage um website and the um the showreel video within the call out um yeah. within the call out text I think I've also put in an image from Kim Hiller High Water, um, which obviously again we've referenced and put a link to the website and stuff. Um, I'm just yeah, I feel like there's. I just want to make sure that people feel that creatives feel equipped to be able to put in a proposal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think in many ways it's about providing that it's about someone understanding the concept and coming back with a really, really good. A good, a good bit of dra- a good bit of s- sort of potential scenography and theatre. Uh, I don't. You know, it's not just about coming back with. I'm I'm very good at using these diff- different bits of software. I think, and then they might be, but th- that might be helpful. 
but ultimately it's the idea or probably the concept. I Absolutely. I think it, it definitely is the concept and how that works, but also making sure that they do have a strong yeah. skill yeah. set, a strong grounding in how they how they want to make it work. But yeah, we may well end up yeah, having to work quite a lot with with you to support them and actually realizing that and facilitating that in terms of like the technical aspects of it. And that's the challenge, and that's what's that that's what makes this a use a useful exercise in finding in to, for future future works because you'll find find the, there are skills that, that that they need to bring in or or upskilling people to do certain things and how, and how to do that the sorts of things they might they might need to learn how to use but yeah learning how to use vmix will be helpful in all of that because you do get the concept the understanding of it yeah and we can certainly help out with those things if they don't know those. It's unlikely they will know those skills initially, but there might be people who are familiar with kind of um, streaming media. Someone someone who's played around with streaming media before, and then they may have they may have come across some of these sorts of skills. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're very that, that they're they're particularly have a have a, a, a um, you know it doesn't want to preclude people. We have good ideas and good storyboarding and good, 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 good uh, writing <laughs> sort of drama skills in, in, in writing theatre and writing, writing sort of improvise sort of potential opportunities. For, absolutely. For absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking specifically for this commissioned piece and the fact that there is a tight turnaround and the person needs to have the skills in making the visual work because um, they need to be able to create those those images and make the story flow. Um, yeah. But they might need some assistance in terms of like how to layer everything and how to make it work. I think, uh, I think, well, I think in a nutshell, sorry, that's one, in, in, a, in a quick nutshell, then just to say uh, to have to have digital Adobe skills and knowledge of, of streaming media in video would, would be helpful, but not, but it's not essential, but it would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think, uh, I gave that example about a pigeon theatre before. I said that they're not interested in technology. They're, they're, they're not particularly tech savvy, but they they made one of the most creative kind of uh, performances because they're good create good creators, and that's kind of one of the reasons why we work, we work with them. So be, so people you know learn quickly, uh, and and it is once you sort of go into uh, the environment and you're able to play with it and see the sense of intimacy, see and virtual touch and, and all all this sort of thing. Things come fairly naturally to uh, to artists and performers, and their imaginations, you know, really kind of uh, fire. So, yeah, I, I, whilst it can it can be helpful, and if they're you know producing their own digital designs or whatever, it you know that may be a you know a, a good a good thing. Equally, um, you know, through collaborations and, and through Paul's expertise and and other you know and, and others on the team you know it, it's still it's still possible to to get to get great work even if the people aren't particularly technical but again so it's, it's more helpful than than essential if they're not going to be um you know do, doing doing everything i interject as well here paul um i oh. think somebody at bop will need to learn the skills of, of using vmix obviously because there's going to come a time when the, the the research projects ended and you're left with this bit of software and the computer and everything so um i think you need to, to think about who or could be several people learn the sort of how to operate vmix um but that but that person um can just be like a production desk operator they don't necessarily have to be a creative person um they could just be the one who builds the whole show in vmix and, and has a script in front of them knows which feed's going to come in at what time and and, and other people in the team uh, somewhere else have created all the, the creative side of it uh, um, and are performing it somewhere else um and you know like paul paul does everything <laughs> he's he's an artist he, he runs vmix he can do the lot um but you don't have to have that um for yourselves you know you could have someone just just operating vmix and everybody else does the creative stuff or it can be ambidextrous that's super useful yeah thanks tom and Lauren, that, that's... I gonna, can i just i was going to suggest because i'm very mindful it, it, 
we've got to be thinking across the whole gamut, haven't we? It's absolutely that exit point and, and what we need in the future. So jumping back to um, Spark, I, I wonder if in the, the call out or commissioning information, there's something about giving some examples of how artists with a different focus could interact with the project. You know, so it could be, for instance, if you're a story maker or theatre maker, you may wish to use telepresence this way. If you're a visual artist, you may wish to explore it this way, but but and also reassuring the amount of support around what the framework around is as well, that we're not expecting somebody to to do this on their own. I think that needs to be really clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's right, that's right. And it would of course they could also apply, I guess, as a partnership, two two or three people might want to want to put in apply for it. It might not be, together they might come in as a group or something would that would that be possible do you think or it's a, it's absolutely possible we've got quite a small commissioning fee attached to it so our concern is just yeah, um, yeah. Is, is, yeah. Is, is around that but okay, but absolutely. Yeah, yeah. okay. It, it may be that we have stu it could be somebody a researcher students applying you know there's different you know mm -hmm. people could be being supported in other ways where it fits their practice um and the, the low the low, low side of the fee isn't such a isn't such a barrier yeah yeah i mean it's it's it could be that um you bring in um you know with, with if when tom and i come up to glasgow and we we, we do a little workshop and, you, and there are if there are people that can either join online or join in in, in person if we can get a little bit of space up, up with you for a day to run this sort of thing you know you we're gonna we're gonna go away and leave you with 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 this resource it would be a potential situation where people you who want who would you may want to commission in the future may have got access to this 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 knowledge they may have even downloaded it themselves or played around with it and started to play around with it themselves um they know that you have a computer with a with a good graphics card they and you, you know that they have the skills to do it so it might be that they, in the future you you have a you have a local resource you can go to, to say oh well, and it starts to it's probably a community of people already in glasgow that might have some of this 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 knowledge already and it's tapping into that and that might be through all sorts of things i don't know whether um in in kind of the university or the art school or other things there might be people there might, might be artists that have used this that, that, that you, you're you're going to going to sort of you know looking to sort of connect up with people in your network who might have that sort of video knowledge um, that that uh, you're looking for, and we can share that with them. That's the thing. So in the future, they may make it back to you and say, "Look," or you may go to them and say, "Look, can you do this for us?" Or can can they use the resource to do something with? Or or it just becomes a more shared shared collaborative sort of opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that definitely is where we want to take the future working of it. Mm. Like, yeah, for certain, just that there's more people able to use it and able to have access to to that hardware and software, um, which then makes me sort of think about, there's obviously that question here about um, laptop or desktop solution. Um yeah, and that that's something. That, I mean, that that's what we will do. Is so we we have the opportunity to we 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 can we will set set that up for you, and we'll bring it. Bring, we'll, we either with somewhere either we either either we we have it sent to you, and we come and come and install it and show you and do the demos, or we can bring it with us. Um, but so yeah, so so the options that we 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 put it to cryptic that, uh, in a way that the options they have is to either have a laptop version of the solution um, that is. Um, is portable, but it does. There's, a, there's also screens as well, which are not so portable. Large screens that come with it, um, or but the, the, the advantage, the, the disadvantage of that is it's difficult to expand it in the future. So if it's a desktop machine, and you want to take out, you know, you want to you want to increase the the, the memory or change the the drive or the, a particular bit of a hardware in it, or even the video card, it's much more easy to do that in the future. So it's kind of got much more expansion. And, and and future upgrading opportunities but it depends i mean the laptop is as i say is much more is more useful and what can be moved around quite a bit um i should just add one of the one of the 
key things, of course, of course, is good, good, good network connection, <laughs> a good, good bandwidth, um, and and um, and your nearest nearest internet connection is, is always an issue. Always the sort of to be on the look lookout for a good internet connection. They may want to think about that in Hong Kong. I'm sure they have it. I'm sure. I'm sure the shopping center in Hong Kong has a very good net network connection. But always a wired connection is much more preferable than Wi-Fi and that sort of thing. So I don't know. So the question really is up to you. Um, we're happy to do it either way. We 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 would um, with a laptop or a desktop machine. I probably, I kind of favour the desktop because it is just a little bit more easier to go with. But that, but I don't want to, it to then bolt you down to that one location where you have to locate it all the time. And that's that. That's the issue you might want to think about. Laptops yeah. working. Well, Tom was working with a laptop, and it's working very well. I understand. Yeah, it's tricky. I would definitely appreciate anybody else's thoughts. Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm definitely like, oh, there's pros and cons to both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I I kind of, I mean, let's, let what I would do, I've, I've, got a, I've got a meeting with Tom. When are we meeting to look at that laptop? Is it next week? We've got a laptop for Cryptic we're looking at next week. Yes, yes, we are. And and so perhaps I would feel more comfortable about giving 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 you my, now I know what you want to do. Um, I would be much happier to give you a to give you a, a a kind of view on that, having having looked at the performance of the the laptop and what what we can do with that and how that how that works um, next week. So I can get back to you before end of next week with a, with a bit more of a, a guide on that. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's that's absolutely grand. A bit more. Um, yeah, I think the next the other thing to sort of work out is just agreeing on a, a date to like some maybe some pr provisional dates to do the the install and the tutorial day. Yeah. Um, because I can't remember what what dates you said, Paul, may, might be good for you. Like it's a sort of ballpark. Yeah, yeah. I, I the difficulty is I'm I'm away from the twenty first of June. Yep. Till the fifth of July. Fifth of June until the well, it's probably the sixth of July. The sixth is a Sunday, I think. So yeah, it'll be the sixth of July. Um, I feel like I wrote stuff down. But I'm happy to do anything up until the twenty first, up until the twentieth. Well, I can do anything on the on the twentieth. I think July is probably better for us, generally yeah, speaking. Yeah. July is also looking quite good for me too. And and in terms of anything that cryptic want to do, we haven't actually nailed anything down yet. So so we're happy to go with July. Okay. And, um I'm you know it's yeah july is looking quite good at the moment okay well yeah let us have a, a look um because yeah obviously if we're wanting to invite other disabled creatives to come and of know, course yeah 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 partake in the conversation um also if we want the the commissioned artist um the hong kong commissioned artist to be there as well we need to make that work in with our timeline so leave that with me we 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 have got a bit of a bit of an issue with that harbour. So any any equipment we do purchase, we do need a bit of we need a lead. We've got a bit of a lead in time. We need to get that. So the sooner we can decide on that, the better. Yes. So so it does take the university notoriously it takes about four weeks. Is that right, Tom? About four weeks to get to, from from purchase. So I'd say allow at least four weeks. Yeah. Right. Okay. So apologies about that. No, that's fine. I think if we we'll yeah if we can talk about the laptop thing next week paul like just if you have a a feeling on whether the laptop or the desktop solution is going to be better for us and then once we've once we've got that info and we can make a decision then we can just get it ordered okay let me get back to you on that one next week that's definitely definitely do that cool because yeah that feels like a bit of a time priority and if we can also get identify those that that, that briefing session yeah to it to to sort of go out to announce the call and i can do that date with them with, with that 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 join you for that that briefing kind of kind of demo day okay cool okay when that could be that'll be good too yeah i'm happy to try and do i could do a couple if you wanted to i mean like we could even if we, there's any way getting one in at least before the 20th and maybe it's just sort of a small group maybe it's just three or four people i don't mind and then another one later if it helps you it's cool. no doing that. that's a very easy thing for me to me to arrange and what could take Half an hour, maybe. 20, maybe half an hour, 40, yeah. 40 minutes. 
yeah. you know, a nice little little sort of sort of sort of packed little demo. They try out the piece, they get an idea, and then then they then they can and then over to you to say how do you how do you make make the application and pitch pitch the proposal and that sort of thing. Yeah. So if we can get one, happy to do two, or if you can get get attract a larger audience before the twentieth, that'd be great. But but um, nothing nothing hard to organise with that one. Yeah, let me have a think on dates and and get back to you. Okay, that'd be great. Um, so July is looking like a good month. I mean, we can do stuff uh, August, September as well. So just, I think what would be useful is to think about if you want to, maybe we won't do it, we won't, we won't nail it down in this meeting, what dates, but but if you want to think about what your timeline is and the sort of sort of dates and weeks, you might think, well, that's a good day to do this. That's a good week to do this. I can then look at that and then, then put some put some proposals in there as well. We can start to see a kind of timeline shaping up. And then I've, I've discussed that with the team and when they're available to join in conversations and input ideas and that sort of stuff and help things along the way and get a get get a get a, get a program together. No. Oh. Might be the best best way for us to go. How does that sound? That's all great, Paul. There's um <laughs> lots of us to think about creatively and logistically. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't. I'm trying to help a little bit more with this idea that the sort of person you're looking, for, but it is quite. From what you can tell today, it is quite a difficult thing to sort of to sort of capture, but without yeah. being too prescriptive about what it is, because it yeah. is because what, what you what you want to have is is really exciting, creative ideas from people. You don't want to limit what what they're by saying you know, someone. You don't want to put somebody off and say, "Well, I better not because I can't use Photoshop or something like that." That's the last thing you want to want to try and try and be in. But um yeah, I think it's yeah, with this project we just we want to make sure that it, it can get delivered on time. I know, absolutely. absolutely. So it's it's a thing of like we, I mean, we want we want people to feel like yeah. inspired by yeah, yeah, yeah. the work, but we also need someone to be able to really bring the skills that they need yeah, to yeah. Bring and and to learn the other stuff and to be able to really like run with it. Um so yeah, that's, that's our only concern with like but I think what we need to do is that we just need to give them plenty of examples um of the the ways that it can work um and kind of maybe break down some of the um some of the technical elements without making it too scary yeah, yeah, um, yeah. for example like I'd love to be able to use that um the graphic that you've created that has the sort all the kind of um the kind of feeds and how they kind of feed into each other and then them creating that final image just to, for, yeah. just to really show the idea of these um the layers because i think that's one of the kind of key concepts of it exactly that's that's a really good graphic to include i can i can send those all, all those to you you can use all those graphics to get, to get that concept across that would be amazing because i think that would be really really helpful because i like it is it's quite it can be quite difficult to get your head around but even as michelle said earlier um you know like it was it can be tricky to get your head around, but actually once you do it, you're like, oh, okay. Or once you see it, you understand how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that kind of um that kind of key thing. Absolutely. I um yeah, I can definitely send you all of those, all of those things, um, those kind of graphic, graphic uh, images. That'd be brilliant. We um I was just gonna say that one actually the, when, we, when we did the work with with improbable. Mm -hmm. They were. Um, they did use a video. They had they had their own video uh, designer. They used. They brought in mm -hmm. uh, who who's who worked with Improbable on a number of things and also done a number number of different theatre projects as a kind of theatre video theatre designer, video and th you know, theatre and video designer, and um, and she was using Procreate as a mm -hmm. software as well, which a lot of my a lot of my illustration students use Procreate, um, which is a really um, it's a very, it's a very effective, very very um, basic digital tool. That's got a you you have you need a it's best used with a tablet and a, and a pen and a kind of like a, a kind of to draw like a traditional drawing uh, uh, interface for it. Um, it. It's and it's very 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 good. So and I haven't I don't know how to use it. I never used it, but they but but she produced some really really stunning visual graphic material with it. 
So anyone that can use Procreate, you know, there's all sorts of different software that people could use um, that might be useful, but they'll know all these tools, the person that does them, that does this. I think that's the thing is to look out the sorts of tools. What sort of tools do they know? What mm. sort of, how, how familiar are they with these things? Um, but really it's about video, it's about theater and video design, theater and video design for, for telepresence. Yeah. Um, and to try and explain it like that, really. It's yeah. uh, it's all part of the project, really. It's in many ways, it's a future, it's a future job, <laughs> actually. That's I, ideally it's where someone will say, Well, that's what I do. That's that that's actually a skill that I have, and and and, and it's actually uh, an, an employed an employed skill that people can have in the future. Yeah. Because we don't have these sorts of these sorts of skills all wrapped up into one sort of term, what they are. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, another thing I thought might, I mean, I wonder if it would be helpful to put in the call out as another as a bit of information, or if it's if you think it's not useful, um, but just to do with the sort of the graphics card stuff and like having like, is it worth us saying that it's would it's best run? Yeah, you know, on a desktop computer that has, I mean, I don't know how you. Like, it, it could be very useful. I mean, at least to say it is only for, only runs on this particular software. Only runs on a PC. Um, yeah. So, so, so you know, a, a kind of competence around working on Windows is going to be helpful. Um, it's, we can't, we can't do it. We can't. It won't work on a Mac. Yeah. But some people are very sort of are very. They're either one or the other. They're, they're not very keen <laughs> to move. Where yeah. some people might say, well, I, I, I can just do one or. Or I can try and do both, or but... how could you? How would you decide describe the sort of the type of graphics card that one would need? It's a kind of games, a games machine, computer. Okay. Any any kind of any kind of computer games laptop has has a has a kind of like new ones have these kind of Nvidia state of the art sort of fast graphics cards. So they're kind of game. They kind of, they are are in the world of game. It moves into that world of the gaming laptops, uh, other things, or or, or those sorts of um world yeah a nvidia are uh, what they're called um i can't remember what they're called now i got it let me just check what here it is geforce <laughs> geforce uh video cards <laughs> it all sounds very gamey now that's what it yeah. sorry paul i'm, I'm just gonna have to to yep. shoot, shoot off no problem. A, a dinner appointment no great problem. to see you paul. thanks a lot thanks okay. so much steve thank you steve brilliant Great. Yeah, I'm just thinking it's useful if we can give that sort of technical information because if someone doesn't have access to a PC, of course, they might just be like, "Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I can't apply because I don't have the resource. Like, I, I have a yeah. Mac and it's not." Yeah. But all these things you might say there are. I mean, you have, you will have a PC and and these sorts of things. So, so with with the project and and it's up, it's up to you. But I mean, you might want to say preferably, or you could. I mean, it's sort of like. We should see more of ADHK what they have. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. That is yeah. on my list. <laughs> yeah, because I so they might they might not need they might, they might not need an actual um the actual computer themselves. They they might not need to have vMix running because it runs in one location. It can it can attach anyone can call it many many locations. So as long as one person is running it, and if it's running on a script like it has done, like I showed you a demo today. You set up a whole script and it will just run it by itself almost. You just call yeah. it whatever you I think want. The reality of this is possibly that the vMix and the, the bringing it all together is done at our end. Yes. And the, and the artist is, you know, providing the concept. Maybe some of the some of the graph, depending what they're doing. Yeah. You know, the reality of us expecting an artist to come along with all those skills, Morna, at this point, yeah. is going to look. It's going to. Yeah, yeah. Completely reduce who that person is. Yeah, I think we are going to have to do the VMix part. Yeah, I think so, and I think in a way, if 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 we're that's what I mean about creating a, a sort of structure and a framework around it. If we're quite clear what that is, yeah. and then we're quite clear because that may, opens up, opens it up to artists who don't have any of the skills but have a brilliant idea of how they want to respond to that call. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And we're 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 always here to help with that as well. So so you know, don't feel as though you will get stuck in that situation. We're happy to help out and sort of just you know you know join help make things 
happen if, they, if it's something that's causing us sort of sort of uh yeah if it's if it's a sort of something a hurdle we don't want to stop we don't want to let that to get in the way make sure you can do it yeah no this has all been so so useful just for getting yeah getting our heads around it and also getting into like the, the real kind of like detail of it all and working out how it's going to actually happen yeah yeah I mean, we need to give it a tele. It's a tele. It's a kind of telepresent stage perf- performance producer artist. <laughs> it's the person that does it. And then a little bit of description about what the project is and, and some of the some of the graphic stuff and ideas for w- what you can do with it. Um, it. It is sort of, and as you say, I mean, it it could be a five minute piece. Um, it, it could be very short. But how how do you how do you engage people in that in that world? What what sort of situations do you create? What sort of narratives are there? Yeah. you want to create between these locations um yeah and i'm happy to help help with that uh, putting putting that description together with you Warner, if you need if you need some input so if you want to send a draft to me or i'm happy to add, add some stuff into add, add some stuff to your draft provide you with some graphics and some and some visuals that sort of thing so um that'd be super useful i'm more than happy to do any of that I'm going to put, put you up on here so I can see you. Where are we? There we go. I can then play to there. There we are. We're sitting here now. So we're sharing those things. Great. Okay. There we are. I'm just looking at my diary. Timing wise. Um, I think it's now 10 to 1. It's been really, really, it's been a really good morning. And I really hope it's an opportunity just to share some of these these things. I think I've got I think I've got a recording here somewhere out of all the different bits and pieces. Whether whether it's all in the right time, I don't know. <laughs> I think I have to go back and put the re, re re put the audio back on this at some point in some adjusted manner. But um I think it's almost there. But um it's been really, really good, really good. Um, event. I think I might have to draw it to a close, though. Is that is that okay? I think that's I yes. Think <laughs> we've got we've got plenty to 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 action and take forward. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, 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 brilliant, brilliant. Okay, well, it's been really good talking with you. I'm, I'm very excited about this, the, the, the both the projects, um, and I think there's it's really it's a really creative way of bringing the two things together that they that they inform each other i think that's the thing going forward to think about what that what that kind of timeline for your residency will be and how how best to try and make that happen and to think about how we might try and share share some some experiences across your your activities great okay so that moment where i say where i'm going to say we're going to now say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for holding on for meeting lots of new faces as well. So really good to see you all. Really appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Paul, I should have a recording. Um, I was recording it on my laptop, so hopefully... Uh, oh, that's that brilliant. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'll be I'll be I'll be coming to get that from you. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. How soon do you need that? Because I'm oh, you're basically on, on the annual leave this week. Can it wait till next week or of course, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. No uh, worries. No worries. No, no hurry for it. We're fine. We're fine. No problem. Okay. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Cheers now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.